go. Hello, everybody. Sorry, it's going to take a few more minutes. I completely forgot to re-download the game, so it's working at 21 gigs out of 36 gigs. So there we go. Oh, sorry, I just had to run and grab my tea real fast. Sorry, Bird. Yeah, I just we started to do the five-minute countdown stuff. Literally, this first stream doing it. Just to give everyone time to jump in and get together. So it sounds like a lot of people haven't played or seen this game at this time. So it's a great opportunity. I don't think there's going to be a lot of spoiler issues. Because, again, most people haven't played it yet. Which will be perfect. So for anybody who is curious about this new the new setup right here. Sarah right here in chat. She absolutely lovely work. She worked on the entire background here. So this whole thing was... Uh, her creation that I worked with her on and it turned out absolutely amazing and then from there yellow bat from the community jumped in and did all the motion art so all the little uh, particle effects out of the fireplace the shining light the sounds and everything in the background so we had a great collaboration between everybody and it turned out beautiful give Sarah some love down there aloha everybody Sorry, I, I can't say that I can't uh, read that name, but hope you're doing well. You've only seen cutscene compilations. It's the members fuzzy. No worries, I'll be here. And we're going to have a little bit of the rules we're going to do for this one. I don't know if I want to do what we did during Alan Wake, where there's absolutely no spoilers for anything. For Quantum Break Story. No spoilers throughout the whole thing. However, there's going to be a lot of Remedy Connected Universe stuff that we're going to be poking around in. So I will be pointing that stuff out and discussing those freely. So this will be a lot of fun. But yeah, so basically, just because we have, again, a few more minutes before this finishes re-downloading to go through. So this window background above the desk here, that is going to change based upon the game we're playing. We actually did make one for uh, The Evil Within, but we didn't get the rest of this finished before the stream ended, so unfortunately we didn't get a chance to use it. But that's going to be constantly changing based upon whatever we play. Yeah, you've only seen the cutscene, so it seems like you you probably know the most out of anything. At this point. Hello, first time tuning into one of the streams. Well, welcome, Isaac. Glad to have you down here. You just knew that this was uh, the game with Iceman and Time Powers. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. That's basically what it is. And there's a lot more... There's a lot of heavy A-list actors. Or maybe not A-list, but there's a lot of well-known actors throughout the course of this game. Which is really cool. And you'll notice it when we get to it. If you do spoilers or a Psychic 10-year-old goggles, I will yell at you for... This is my doozy sensor. Gotcha, Kayla. I'll let you know if uh, something pops up. I have, I can semi do a little bit of stuff, but we're good now. Lamp lighter the game, maybe Broston. <laughs> Is there his ambience in there too? Yes. So uh, Yellow Bat added actually went into the game of Control and recorded some ambience to throw into this along with some fire crackling, which is pretty good. Do I plan to go into any particular route? Um, what do you mean, Sarah? So you pl okay, Isaac? So you played Control and the Alan Wake. So yeah, this is I th Quantum Break is generally considered to be the weakest of the Remedy uh, storylines, and I'm it definitely has the least amount of Remedy flair in terms of that weirdness to it. However, it's a great experience to go through. There are some debatable uh, design choices, but at the end of the day, it's it's a great experience, great story all around. You can definitely tell Microsoft's money was in this one. No, not the first time playing this one, Key, but it's the first time I've played it live. Alright, so where are we at? We are at 29 gigs out of 36. We got 7 gigabytes left. So while we are waiting on that, let me get my tea poured. So there's going to be a lot of reading. Like, if you've played Control, you know there's a lot of reading on this. This one's worse. Every like, There's some documents that will take you like 10 minutes to read through. So this stream will be half gameplay, half reading. But as a result, I need some tea to keep my throat feeling nice. Uh, 
All right. Trying to go spoiler free. Yes, exactly. We're going to go spoiler free for this game, but we will be mentioning stuff and how it links to other games. And we'll see that stuff sooner than you think. There's literally a bunch of uh, Remedy Connected Universe stuff right at the beginning of the game. Uh, let's go with this one. Where's my coaster? You got all six seasons of Lost because he was a fan of the series. He used to watch when I first aired Lost as very Remedy Core. Yeah, like, the Lost and, um, I'm actually re-watching Fringe right now. I was watching it about ten minutes before it went live. And it, I think it was made by the same people, to, uh, uh, too, so... If you haven't watched that one, check it out. It's very... It's more science-based. But if you're a fan of Control, you'll get a kick out of it. Alright, let's get that T nice and steeped right there. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, um, yeah, that's fine, Roden. That's fine. So, it seems like Roden, you're the only one that's played it, so... Yeah, keep details to a minimum, but very quickly, literally in the intro cutscene, they'll talk about that, so... It's not too big. Okay, come on. Come on, T, get nice and ready. Alright, we got three gigabytes left, and we're ready to go. You should probably read more of the documents to control now and wake, but I just wanted to get through the game. Honestly, just rely on your videos to fill you in. Yeah, the documents are probably 90% of the you, the background story. Like, it's it doesn't... Not a lot of it pertains directly to the plot of what Jesse's going through. But it does... Fill... It like, basically sets the universe up. It's more of the world-building aspect of it. Yeah. I'll definitely be making more of the nitty-gritty um, control lore videos. Now that we've gotten a lot of the broad stroke stuff taken care of, we're going to dive deeper into the uh, more smaller overlook stuff. Could Jack Joyce out bullet time max paint? Yes. <laughs> yes, little Gamba. Oh, boy. Alright, 50. We got less than... We got about half a gigabyte left, and I can get this all set up. Sorry for being unprofessional not having this ready, but it gives us a chance to hang out and chat for a little bit first. Oh. Steam has finished downloading. Nice. And if anyone's curious, I do have the privilege of being able to drink my tea today out of a official Federal Bureau of Control coffee mug. The store was just refilled. Yes, Key, we are going to do that. Um, basically, every stream is going to be structured one episode fully, but don't say anything more about that. Let's let the rest of it be a surprise. So let me try this out. One other thing I wanted to test out here is... To, uh, here, I'm going to try polls, because I've never done polls before. And with this game structure, we kind of have to. So I want to test this one out before we get going. You haven't That's right, you haven't played c Control uh, yet, Kayla. Well, we're going to do this one, Evil Within 2, and then get back to Control. All right, give me a second. I'm gonna. I need to switch the screen that this is on. Uh, display ultra. Hold on. Let me see if I can actually change it. I don't think I can change the screen that this is on. Normally, I can. In most games allow you to switch if it's monitor one versus monitor two, but this one's not letting me. Let me see. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually have to move where Streamlabs is at. Come on, get over here. That's fine. It just means I'm not going to be able to see too well. All right. All right. And the reason why we need to do this uh, poll here is because it will be very relevant later on in the game. No, 9% said no polls. Shh. <laughs> That I own control now, like American Nightmare. I got really excited and realized you owned all of them and they were in the same universe. How did you own them without realizing them? All right, so let's get my headphones on, make sure my controller's working, and let's get going. We're gonna have to restart the game since I literally just finished a replay. And where is that sheet? There we go. 
so just in just to make sure we found everything i did do a playthrough and wrote myself a collectibles log so we can hit every document in the game this way we don't miss anything because i'll basically how this one's structured is unlike actually here let me click over here make sure you're doing good and switch over to the game itself all right go ahead let me know if the audio needs to go up or down with the game usually the game's a little bit high let's drop it down a little bit but with how alan wake was a lot of its uh, background lore was done through different mediums of entertainment so we had a prequel television miniseries we had the game itself you had a companion novel written by one of the characters you had basically you, you looked in many different places for the information quantum break everything is consolidated into one game so all the alternate media forms of media are all here at the same time you're gonna need an i voted sticker yes i will have an official uh gu i voted sticker and send it out to everybody uh bird absolutely how's the sound i just want to double check the sound before we go any do anything else which department of the NPC would you like to work at and why and why is Panopticon? Personally, I... Probably investigation sector. But there is something to be said about the uh, Dead Letters Archive. But I gotta... Shh! I can't say anything about that. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Let me turn my volume up. We're going to start a new game. And let's go. So I am going to be doing a lot of reading. So forgive me if my voice gets a little gravelly. But let's do this. Hard, you gotta play on hard, come on. Like Remedy Fashion, you can only ever have one save file. So you have to delete your whole game just to get here. So let's go, guys! This is gonna be a first time for everybody, or for a lot of people, but I'm excited to show it off. The number one killer is time. It destroys us all. This is what you need to know. Time broke. A growing fracture leading to the end of time. You can we get it on Steam right now, Isaac. It. Things turned ugly. Paul Stream was there to stop us. He has superpowers. Jack. Him and me both. We failed. Jack. And of course, time travel is Jack. Going too fast for you? Okay. What do you want to cover first? You tell me. Let's start at the beginning. When you first arrived at Riverport University. I came back home to see my best friend, Paul Serene. He wanted to show me what he'd been working on. My brother, Will, was a scientist. He was also involved. Paul said it was world-changing. He was right. Hey guys, it's Dylan Faden right there. No joke, that's the actor for Dylan. <laughs> Riverport University. Here we are. Yes, I'll put subtitles. I apologize about that. I'll throw it on right now. No problem. Game audio is a little bit down. Okay, give me a second. You'd been away for six years. Paul and I had kept in touch, but... Give me a second. Let me throw on... Where is the subtitles? Trolls audio sound effect. Where Where is that setting? There we go. Well, not so much. How did it make you feel? I was just happy to see Paul. Okay, so let me fix this real quick. Uh, game audio you said is a little bit low. So let's throw you up a little bit and throw me down a hair. Is that better? 
There's actually another character who's supposed to be Jack Joyce, but he, um, this character right here. But we got Iceman instead at the end of the day. So, first things first, let's head back here and check out this oddly positioned gentleman. I guess I should go find Paul. You'll probably you recognize him. Yeah. Hey, you work for Monarch, don't you? I've seen your face on the news. Guilty as charged. An anti-Monarch protest doesn't exactly seem like your scene. I like to keep a close eye on the opposition. Uh-huh. A little dressy for 4 a.m., don't you think? It's a very special occasion. I'm guessing you're not referring to the protest. Let's call it a private function. You'll have to excuse me, I have work to attend to. So yes, we have Iceman, we have here. the amazing, better the one and only campus. Lance Reddick as well. Oh gosh, yeah, I'm going to be going around everything, don't worry about it. I'm going to hit all collectibles, poke my head around as much as we can. Whatever you want. I don't have the time. And there's going to be a bunch of random stuff I'm pretty sure some people haven't found yet. <laughs> Rough night, huh? Oh, it's for... Um, I, it's just whatever doesn't even matter anymore. That sounds, I'm, yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, okay, dude, you need to just sleep it off, buddy. All right, let's take a look here. Paul told me to meet him at the physics building. Physics building. Okay, so let's go ahead and... It's easier to read these collectibles actually here, since it goes full screen. So... One thing I do want to bring everyone's attention to on the map of... Because we're on the Riverport University campus. But if you look at the dormitory section, the very bottom hall... It's like you have Butler Hall, Gilliam Hall. The very bottom one is called Moorcock Hall. So if you're familiar with Alan Wake and the very first Night Springs episode, it took place in the Moorcock Institute for the Quantum Suicide episode. Quantum Suicide, Quantum Break, both having the Moorcock reference here. And if anyone's unfamiliar, Michael Moorcock is a uh, author who is heralded as the granddaddy of a shared universe in literature. It's, the acting is perfect. He's just like, oh, I'm done. It really shows that they got uh, Microsoft money to help out with a lot of performances in this game. All right, so that's part one. Let's go. Resist the urge to make <laughs> a dirty joke. Hey, hey. You can make as... I, I, I'm not against dirty jokes. You're fine. You're fine. Oh. Jack. You just got to the campus. Where are you? God, it's good to hear your voice. Oh my god, Cat, what are you doing? Uh, when you hit the courtyard, look right. You see this fancy modern physics building with the lights on. I'll meet you inside there. I am so looking forward to this, man. Still haven't told me what this is. Cat, what are you doing? See you soon. Why 4 a.m.? Why not wait till morning? There's a lot of dialogue, so forgive me if I don't talk much. Paul had always been a showman. Alright, so that's that part of it done. Cat, okay, Cat, fine. You can hop up. Get up here. Come on, hop up. Hop up. You want some attention? Or do you just want to clot my pants? Yes, it's full. It's silence here. I actually first uh, saw Lance Reddick in Lost as uh, Matthew Abaddon, and then later as uh, Broyles in freaking Fringe. Hold on. Let me try to get this mouse off the screen here. Hey you, take action now. Monarch Solutions wants to tear down the pride of Riverport University, the beautiful and historic library building generations have studied in. This is part of our heritage, they do not care. Are you going to put up with that? Of course you aren't. Are you going to take action? Of course you are. First of all, go online and use the hashtag save the library and get loud. The only way they'll stop and take a look if they look bad enough doing it. Secondly, join our protest at the university on October 8th. Let's show them that we are still people left in the report who give a crap. So we, what we've known right now is Monarch is a big company and they're getting ready to tear down the library and there's an on-campus protest regarding it. His ringtone is the Alan Wake theme. I'll have to pay attention next time. French was the first for me. Yeah, he's amazing in French. <laughs> That's vaguely ominous. So we are going to pay attention to a lot. Cat, no, 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 cat. You're going to rip my headphones out if you jump that way. Charlie, stop. I Mother. Hold on. He literally just ripped my headphones out. Come on, cat. Hmm. 
There we go, I can hear. And Hatch does the same things the Dark Lady and the Dark... Oh, does he vanish after... Okay, sorry, I'm back. So the graffiti uh, paintings on here are something we want to pay attention to, and if you'll notice here, there is a signature for Toto as the artist right there. The animals work for Monarch, yes. And as you... I, I never actually walked back here, but yeah, so the uh, Lance Reddick just vanished from back here as well. No longer here, but let's get going. Hey there, Matt, how are you doing? Hope everything's going well. Okay, let me grab my little notepad. Next one is... Okay. Alright, let's go talk to a few more people. Just to get some atmosphere here. <laughs> some protest. Yeah, you've had a little too much. Hey, do you know where the physics building is? You mean the big-ass metallic turtle behind me? Hard to miss, man. Thanks. Yeah, you, you could have just said right behind me, buddy. I'm not from around hey, here, dude. Go home yet? All right. Stop Monarch Problems poster. For years, Monarch Solutions has been buying out report piece by piece, steamrolling over small businesses and local culture to establish corporate dominance. On October 9th, they attempted to demolish the historic Riverport University Library to make way for an additional Monarch-funded university research center. They've gone too far. Sick of Monarch Solutions turning our city into a corporate monopoly? So are we. It's time to stop trading culture for profits. It's time to stop Monarch. On October 8th, 7 p.m., help us by spreading awareness of Monarch's shameful actions by joining our protests in the center courtyard. Camp out and enjoy all of the night music. Tell your friends. For more information, contact Amy Ferrero, a Ferrero at RupertUniversity.com. Note, this is a non-alcoholic event. Uh, I think you failed there. I'm pretty sure everybody has been drinking here, just saying. Yeah, so we're on a college campus currently, Isaac. So basically, he got a call from his buddy, told him to come here at the middle of the night, and that's all we know so far. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I never noticed that uh, that character disappeared. All right. Sophia Amaral seminar poster. Guest seminar doctor Sophia Amaral. Thursday, September 29th, 7 p.m. at the Henry Kim Theater. The recently appointed head of Monarch Solutions Physics Research Division, Dr. Sophia Amaral, has taken much of her inspiration from the theories of her report's own Dr. Williams, William Joyce and now devotes herself to discovering practical applications for chronon particles. Her presentation will highlight the evolution of chronon particle research and will be followed by a Q&A focusing on career advice for aspiring physicists. Hey there, Hidden Machine. Dude, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, your day is going well. We all know how persons against big corporations always solve things. Well, we'll see how this all works out. So, Monarch is Amazon. <laughs> uh, hopefully, Amazon's not this bad as Monarch, but yes. So, here's one little tidbit right here. Stone Crow is going to be performing at the Royal Almond Hall, and it is an Old Gods of Asgard tribute band, Stone Crow. Again, we've got a little bit of an echo there from Alan Wake. Nothing really right there. Like I said, there's a lot of reading. There's sections where there's a ton of reading, and then we get into the combat sections. But here we go, we got a radio.
much as it pains me to say this, I think this is a done deal. Monarch's going to take that library down tomorrow, no matter what we say. Might as well back it up and go home and get ready for the next fight. Because you know, they aren't done with our town yet, right? Yep, and that's the end of that one. Um, we're not going to talk too much about that uh, loon code. We're going to keep it spoiler-free for the game, but we're going to be talking about the broader remedy stuff um, as we go through. By the way, hey, hey there, Andrew. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's a lot of fun, and I wouldn't say that this is um, to answer whose question was it. Hidden machine. Yeah, I wouldn't say that Quantum Break is the best one in the series, but it is definitely fun. There's nobody left to convince. And I apologize, Bird, but yes, there's going to be a lot of reading. Cause made me sympathize with the students. That sucks. So this is one little bit of uh, trivia here that I don't think anyone's ever talked about, but you can see the uh, motto for the university right here at the bottom. Uh, to Oxider Post... I can't even read the whole thing. It's kind of hard to see. But it's actually a reference to a book series. It's the motto of a fictional university from, another, from a book franchise, and it translates as, they can kill us, but they cannot eat us, because that's illegal. Just random as hell. I don't even know what to make of it, but true story. Uh. All right, let's go talk to this lady over here. If you're with that fraternity, you've done enough damage. We're being shut down. <laughs> hey, I come in peace. I'm just meeting a friend nearby. At 4 a.m.? Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, we're spreading awareness about Monarch Solutions, so if you want to know how badly they're giving us the shaft, then you could just ask me. Sure. Let's take a look at your board real quick, and then we'll come back and talk to you. All right, so Amy's Monarch Timeline. Selling out Riverport since 1999. In 99, bought out all major tech and security companies in Riverport using earnings from shady investments. 2000, evaded questioning regarding who was truly running Monarch. 2001, bought out major media outlets. Questions stopped being asked. In 06, bought Gull Island. Tore down war dock monuments to construct R&D facilities. In 08, demolished Riverport Central train station to build Monarch Tower. 2010, purchased entire industrial district and dry docks, putting thousands of people out of work. 2016, aims to demolish the Riverport University Historical Library to replace it with yet another research facility. What is Monarch's agenda? Nobody knows. Who runs the company? Nobody knows. When do we want answers? Now. I'm not going to read that with any more gusto. <laughs> Sorry. All right, what's going on here? Okay. How would you feel if you knew a corporate monopoly was taking a massive dump all over your personal history? Uh, that's quite an opener. Good. Because that beautiful library over there is over a hundred years old. It's part of the city's heritage. And Monarch Solutions plans to tear it down tomorrow. Do you want to know why? We've got a chart with all the details. I've already read it. Okay, let's read it again just so we can Monarch's tearing down trigger the, the next part of the conversation. Another research facility. And for what? I bet you're going to tell me. Hmm, to push their corporate agenda. I mean, look at those numbers. They're slowly taking over the city, and everybody's completely blind to it. Uh, it doesn't look good. Hey, I gotta meet my friend, but you keep fighting this, okay? All right. Enjoy your booty call. <laughs> Not exactly. Get your mind out of the gutter, lady. Seriously. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, Riverport. That, again, more Remedy Water references. And if you think about it, River is an offshoot of the ocean. And this is where it's ported. So if you drive, if you uh, sail down the river from the main ocean and you land in port, here's where you show up. It's just maybe a poetic illusion with why this may be like a pocket universe in the primary Remedy shared universe. We got a museum being destroyed in my hometown, which is a historic building. It reminds me a lot about... That sucks. Like, uh, we have a historical district in my city, too, and it, everything's protected here. You can't do anything. Since I work in construction, not even joking, you have to have a specific license just to be able to work and repair um, historical homes. And it's something I have to deal with a lot of the times. Okay, sign the petition, expose the lies, and find the truth. Well, for some reason, we got somebody sleeping on a mattress back here. I mean, how did... 
No, I guess you put the mattress in the first time. All right, you guys ready for this? It's not a lake. It's an ocean. He's been gone for five years. Dark matter and dark energy constitute over 95% of our universe. Hey, it's back space. No, it's not. We're just a speck of light floating in an endless ocean of darkness. It's the clicker. Someone has the clicker right there. Every story finds its writer. Alan's always super cheerful. Alex Casey. Wake has a bloody knife in his light of the flash of his smiles and look at Swayze lies in the blood of his face. Eyes staring. Have two faces the one we wear for all to see, and the face that lies beneath in the dark. Boom. Like I said, even though this is technically not in the primary universe or the remedy verse, there is way too many, too many Alan Wake references throughout the course of this game, and I mean, it just weird references too. All right, so we need to break that down while we're wandering around and staring at the wonderful landscape. All right, so obviously we got Alex Casey played by Sam Lake right there. And if we remember, there's a document in the AWE DLC of Control that specifies that a FBI agent named Alex Casey was uh, requisitioning the FBC to give them documents on Alan Wake's disappearance. And the Bureau agents were weirded, the f weirded out, basically, because, like, hey, a fiction... A that's the name of his Alan Wake's character that he wrote about in his books. How is a real character with the same name asking information about him specifically. Not only that, but there's also... Hold on. Let's just start that up again real quick. So if you looked in the background of it, there is a um, ram statue that's located in the detective's office. And we'll come back to that later. But also the blonde woman, it's never stated in the game itself, but we actually have a name for her. her name Paul is... Paul always been hungry for success. Jack, I'm talking. Driven. He made it onto a lot of those top young professionals lists. And now he was coordinating some huge project at the university. It's a big deal for him. Yeah, I, same thing here, Key. I fully expect that they're going to play on some of these themes with uh, Alan Wake 2 now that we have official announcement. It's not going to be exactly the same. I feel like this is a initial attempt at writing the return manuscript. But it never, uh, it didn't pan out. But he's going to bar upon these themes. And one thing I find interesting, again, is you have a lady sitting, laying back here, sleeping. Now, we've seen multiple times that the televisions will start playing stuff from the Dark Place Threshold when someone's sleeping around it like an American Nightmare. Barry was sleeping on the ground, or so sleeping in the motel room, and boom, a version of Night Spring started playing right then and there. So I'm curious if this played here because the person's in an unconscious sleeping state right behind it. Anyway, so the woman, um, the blonde woman in that video, her name is Saga Anderson. And Saga is actually the name for a, I believe, a Norse deity as well. Um, and it's very heavily implied that this may be one of the Anderson brothers' granddaughters, or like a niece, a grandniece, or something along those lines. So she's related to the old gods of Asgard. Just in time, Banana. Hello, how are you doing? We, we haven't even gotten inside the building yet. We've literally spent, I, I don't know, 40 minutes just sitting here in the opening section. <laughs> All right, let's go. 
Hey, protest's over. At home. Not why I'm here, Chief. Mister that safety whistle. Prick. Where's your uniform? Excuse me. Come on. I've been in shit enough to smell out security. You sure this is somewhere that you want to be sniffing around? Was that supposed to be a threat? Because <laughs> that's adorable. Just walk away. Not the happiest guy, are you? I'm guessing you don't get invited to many dinner parties. <laughs> I said walk away. Oh no. All right. Good to talk. Good talk. Good talk. No, absolutely a little gamba. And I'm... Because there's a line of dialogue that refers to uh, the uh, dude who's named for Scratch in the uh, trailer. So I'm pretty sure we're still dealing with that character. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we, we, we just spent a half an hour before we even got to the front doors. Sorry. it's This is going to be a long game. Hmm. All right. Not exactly modest. So here's Only a little Paul. background on his buddy Paul Serene here. Riverport University employee highlight. Project director. With a track record of extremely profitable business ventures behind him, Paul Serene joined Riverport University in 2010 to head one of the most significant physics research projects the university has ever seen. He is the youngest project director in the history of our university and by far the most successful to date. His involvement has encouraged a flood of high-profile investments that resulted in an extremely ambitious yet unre... Uh, revealed quantum physics project referred to as Project Promenade. In his own words, I am not a scientist myself, and thus it has come as a surprise to many that I found the fa I, that I fought to obtain the position as a project director of development here at the university. For me, it's a dream come true. Growing up with my best friend, who is brother of a renowned quantum physicist, William Joyce, I've always been fascinated by William's work, and his publications from 97 to 99 were groundbreaking for the scientific community. As a businessman, I've been able to shape the path to create a practical application of William's work by building on the foundation that he created with a group of immensely talented physicists. That was the basis for Project Promenade, and the result has been absolutely revolutionary. Paul Serene's favorite sports team is the Riverport Rex, as you can see him in the front row at every game. There's a Christmas version of the video on Remedyverse channel. It has one of my favorite quotes from Sam to date. Can you uh, drop it down here? Ah oh boy, little fingers. Oh boy, you you notice you notice that too already, Sid. All right, let's do this next one, then we can head inside finally. All right, our in in memoriam, Dr. Henry Kim, PhD, from sixty five to twenty sixteen. Our dear friend and colleague Henry Kim, PhD, passed away on Friday, February twelfth, twenty sixteen, at the age of fifty. As per, as a professor at Riverport University, Dr. Kim was praised for his tireless devotion to the field and his students. Both Dr. William Joyce and Dr. Elton Meyer, whose research efforts eventually led to the discovery of the Meyer-Joyce field, were his students. He later made a name for himself as the director of Monarch Solutions Physics Research Division. While maintaining this position, he also contributed heavily to the research at Riverport University, lending to his services to the development of Project Promenade based upon the students' discoveries, which he continued to work on until the time of his death. Oh yeah, Dr. Kim stuff, when we get more on him, mm, mm, love it. More like, oh yeah, Dark Place is clay. Well, that's the entire point of the Dark Place is it is clay for anyone who has the imagination to control it. I feel like the story is a monster, something very similar to the spirit of what was in that video. Copy that. I'll have to. Ch I'll, I'll talk to you later uh, to get the original one. All right, we're finally heading inside. And Unis Duo. So one, two, Intrixer. What does that mean? Hold on. I don't recall what that actually means. So, Unus Duo Intro Ir Exir. Let's see if I can find what that means. Text in Latin. Uh, let's see if I can get a Latin to English translation on that. Can okay, I, computer? One of the two intro to go go. Nah, that's definitely not what it means. <laughs> yeah. I can Translate apps are not helping us right now. Love the Remedy games, 100%. It's freaking... Hold on, what well, exactly? Let's go inside. Wait a minute, let's do this. I had that translated at one point, but I completely forgot what it was. You a trip just to see a research project? Well, reading between the lines, Paul was under a lot of pressure. He needed a friend. I wanted to help him any way I could. 
Son of a bitch. Jack Joyce. In the flesh. The esteemed Mr. Paul Serene. Aiden Gillen. Taking money bags. <laughs> Shut up and bring it in. Welcome home. Six years. And I was starting to think you'd never come back. Yeah, me too. Come on. This way. We're going upstairs to the project lab. How was the flight? First class. Thank you for that. It's a step up from our van trip to Utah. I missed that van. I'm guessing Will's not meeting us. He doesn't know we're here. I That's knew Paul and asked my brother Will to consult on his project. Will was all the family I had, but he was difficult. All right, so he's going to yell at us for a little bit. Oh, boy. Okay, so, yeah, I saw your comment, Tailgate, that it's another word for... Uh, saga is another word for uh, story, tale, or um, in, in Swedish and Finnish. Yo, I'm also Paul, looking up here. Saga possibly here? meaning seeress is a goddess associated well, with know. the location it's of Sokvebekar, I believe is the word. But, yeah, it's a, it's a goddess from um, Norse mythology as well. Goddess of wisdom, actually. Hmm, interesting. So a wise woman. Incident? Yeah, Andre, Jesus no spoilers. Word. You do this time. So keep all spoilers out of uh, chat right now. Okay, so here's, oh boy, entire e email chain here. All right, so there, for some reason, this game, what they do is they have the most recent emails at the top and that then the oldest ones at the bottom. No, you're good, Andre. Like, I'll be talking about Remedy stuff, and I'm not going to be talking about this game specifically. So, um, any idea on why, who William Joyce is? Got a strange request to cut off his clearance at exactly 4.20 a.m. on October 9th. An order was from Liam Burke of Monarch Security Division. I know they're consulting for university security, but do they have the actual authority here? Whole theme's kind of sketchy to me. I asked, and I've got confirmation from our supervisor that Dr. Williams Joyce's security clearance needs to be revoked. So, yeah, the time for the termination is scheduled at 4.20 a.m., October 9th, precisely. No idea why that exact time must be a contract thing. The guy was consulting on Promenade, but he lost his shit in front of the investors a few days ago. I was the one dragging him out. It got pretty crazy. He was yelling about how some lady warned him that this would happen. No idea what the hell he was about. If it was up to me, I'd cut his uh, clearance measures. immediately, but screw it. They don't want my advice. I don't want to get involved in any kind of that monarch stuff anyways. Let's just do our jobs, so keep an eye on the Dr. Joyce until then, okay? P.S. Don't feel too bad about it. I heard this guy actually stole some video game from the break lounge or something, so maybe not somebody we want to be running around with. What? So essentially, um, Jack's brother here worked on the project, and they cut his clearance right now. They specifically scheduled to have his clearance to the buildings revoked literally as we show up. The only thing that really feels about the level of comfort is the rest of the game, or rather, Remedy. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit different in tone and uh, structure, but I think the biggest concern I have with the game is how much reading there is, because it's a very dense story. There's a lot of detail. And they have to do it all through Protests against year. Monarch are going strong. I realize that Balder and the Norse got a blight, yeah, so it can be with bright presence... In. Well, Balder has showed up twice in the Remedy verse. One well, as Max Payne's partner. Day. You're the one that sold out. Oh, I don't know. Rich and successful isn't too bad. You should give it a try. And then the second time, he was a member of the Old in Gods here, of Asgard. Jack. Going up. Okay. So, long story short, I'm gonna any of the ones that we don't need to read through, I'll kind of just uh, sum it up. So this one is basically a, a job fair poster, and they're trying to advertise to the university students if they want to. Uh, come in and work for Monarch in Energy Solutions, Security, Marketing, Cronon Research, Robotics, Customer Service, or Infotech. Hey, Jack. Over here. Come on. Going up. Yeah, it's, it's science time to read and study. Would you guys prefer Control 2 or Alan Wake 2? Right now, dude, Alan Wake 2 all the way because I have been... It's been, it's been 13 years. Or it's, it's going to be 13 years by that point, by the time it's released. And I have There's a much closer relationship with Alan than I do with the my brother. Still worry about him, huh? If Will did something wrong, then Jack, man. <sighs> Look, I've been tight lipped about this for a reason. This project we've been working on is going to change the entire world. Uh 
Why do I smell one of your long-winded presentations on the horizon? I would never. <laughs> oh, who put that there? Oh, look. <laughs> A perfectly placed presentation to illustrate the project. Now, who put that there? <laughs> oh, shocking. Okay. Enough joking. Hey, I'm trying to read the back of your shirt. This way, Stop. I'm trying to read the back of your Come shirt. Come on. Let's just get to the big show. Sorry. So Paul here's wearing a stone crow shirt. You haven't changed at all. No! No! I wanted to do this! Crap! I, I didn't realize it would lock you out of the freaking scene. Oh, that pisses me off. It's it's 11 years as of right now, map Over up at the time. Jack. Shit. This is what I've been working on. But uh, by the time the game comes out, it'll be 13 years. Crap. So basically, Paul puts on a presentation right here. I wish I could reset the chapter, but it'll literally start me way back at the start. Um, and he just goes over that the part of Project Promenade is, in theory, a rotating black hole can create a distortion in space-time. And um, the Meyer-Joyce field is essentially the wavelength that governs fourth-dimensional space. And the ability to manipulate a uh, uh, micro black hole in the sense is essentially would allow one to peer forward and backward. It's like Project Looking Glass, if you're familiar with that literature. Ah. Sorry about that, guys. That pisses me off. Anyways, let's get going. Because I don't think we really want to stop and reset all of that. Even though, probably, I can s speed through it really quickly. I could probably get back here in five minutes. Welcome to Project Promenade. Here we oh, are. shit. <laughs> you guys must have some budget. <laughs> what is all this? The future. Jack, you are looking at the biggest discovery of our time. It's impressive, but Will's the scientist. What do you need me for? There's a reason we're doing this at 4 a.m., Jack. I need someone I can trust. I need you to help me convince Will. Yeah, I had a hunch. When your brother found out the scope of what we were building here, he... <laughs> well, you know Will. Yeah. Hang on, uh, 2016 Isaac desk. is when this game Will came out. Will overreacted, scared off the investors, ranting about miscalculations, dangers, all with no evidence. It works, but they're going to cut our funding if I don't prove it. All right, so the back of his shirt say that this is a tour shirt for the Balance Tour, referencing Balance Slays the Demon, which is their uh, American Nightmare tune. But it also Jack, refers to Stone Crow as the stepchildren you know, of the Elder God. Help is not easy for me. I am in deep trouble. You see, the tests I have to run here are not strictly speaking legal. You're the only one I can trust to help me with this. Whatever Will did, I want to make it right. I love my older brother, but he didn't make it easy. It's already essentially set up. Anyone can do it, but you're the one I want to do this with. Jack, thank you. I knew I could count on you. All right, let's head back real quick because there's a couple things we got to look at. So, again, we have the RAM that was in the video for the return that, for some reason, uh, Alex Casey and Saga Anderson happened to have possession of. This RAM right here. All right, so what are you? Okay, investors made their decision based upon William Joyce's concerns. They are halting all funding for Project Promenade until the equally qualified specialist can be assigned to project to project to the project to perform. I can't even read today. Further inspection. I did everything I could sway the vote, but the only board member who voted in your favor was Martin Hatch. Okay, so Martin Hatch is the only one who voted with Paul in order to just go through with it, regardless of William Joyce's concerns. We brought up William Joyce's questionable mental health, but the damage is already done. He planted the seed of doubt. Let me know how you wish to proceed. We absolutely cannot afford to lose momentum at this point. If we put Project Promenade on hold, we will lose every Cronon specialist on staff overnight. 
Monarch is paying double the wages we are, and it would be absolute nightmare. Our staff is irreplaceable, and I'm struggling to hold on to them as it is. I've known William Joyce since childhood. There's no doubt that he's a genius, but he also has a history of paranoia and mental instability. He's lost sight of the big picture. His concerns regarding Project Promenade are outlandish, unfounded, and based upon ludicrous projections. And he essentially just goes on to say, yep, he's full of crap. And so the entire funding was pulled from this project. And that most likely is the triggering event which made him want to go ahead and just do it anyways. We don't have any funding? Well, we're going to do it without their approval. And I need someone to help me with this, so call out to our old buddy here. The Ram Aries, yep. Singularity versus it. Like, that's the terminology they use in the game, Loon Code. But anyways, we got a little iPad right here. All right, so essentially all of this stuff, we're not going to go through all of this because it's we'll, we'll literally be doing a 10-hour stream if we read every document in the game. But if you, uh, in brief, it's basically Paul's email chain to Jack, basically asking him to come home so that he'll come and uh, do this event with him. And it's just them catching up a little bit. Um, at one point, as we show right here, Jack Joyce, our character, was in a Thai, Taiwanese prison for some reason because of his fuck-ups with the law. And it, it, it just paints the picture that Jack isn't one to really go along with any form of authority. He's kind of a... Uh, he instigates a lot of issues with the uh, authority figures. And he's just going back and forth and back and forth until he agrees to jump on the plane and get back down here. Is this a game or a book? I don't know, Rodan. That's one of the biggest uh, complaints about the game, too, is it's a lot of reading before you even get to gameplay. And even then, it's a lot of reading. So, what's this? Corridor schematics. Travel clockwise leads to a forward progression in time... Whoa, sorry. Counterclockwise, travel backwards. Oh, it's like you invented a clock. Yes, years ahead of our time. Damn it, we missed the one narrative object with that projector. But I need you I to push the lever over there, labeled chronon conduit. That'll activate the core. I'm going to run diagnostics and make sure it remains stable. Yeah, again, no spoilers in for this game in chat, but we will be talking about spoilers for the other Remedy games. That's just going to be the rule from here on forward. Okay, let's check and see what happens. Again, this is probably not a good idea. Same here, Gawain. I cannot wait for Control 2. Because I have my hypothesis that it's going to deal with uh, probably the Blessed Organization or some kind of paracriminal organizations. We need to keep pushing forward, Jack. Are you sure? The figures are all stable. The core replicates the effects of a rotating micro black hole, so activating it can be a bit intense. A black hole? What exactly are we testing here? You're about to find out. Don't worry, Kayla, this no way, one did. It's just that someone made the on. comment um, about spoilers. Just like old times, eh? Slightly illegal, moderately reckless. I'd raised some hell with Paul in the past. I could tell this was different. Still, I didn't understand how massive and far-reaching the consequences for this would be. How could I? I knew Paul. He played it cool, but I could tell he was nervous. It's happening. We're really doing this, Jack. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, just wait, Sarah. There's gonna be even crazier distortion effects. This entire game is just particle effects of the game. I'll be honest. Cameron, it would Here, take Microsoft take uh, giving up um, to publishing rights to this on. game for a remedy to include them in any way, shape, or form, unfortunately. Remedy doesn't have the uh, rights to publish anything more under this name. We need to turn the name. keys at the same time to activate security precautions. Ready? It's like we're launching a nuke. Wait, we're not launching a nuke, right? One way to find out. That does not inspire confidence. Three, two. <laughs> One. Okay, let's do it. God damn, Paul. What is this? The corridor. The passenger enters one end, travels around the loop, exits the other, and arrives at the predetermined time and the physical location where the machine is situated in that time. Passenger? Wait, wait, wait. This is a corridor for... 
You're actually going inside that thing? In the machine, through time. It's a fucking time machine. I'm going to be the first, Jack. And you're my witness. This is crazy, Paul. I mean, this can't be safe. What Let me know if there's any uh, graphical issues. This one's a lot more phase. demanding than Alan Wake was. We passed every test, every inspection. We're about to make history, Jack. Yeah, no ripping holes into the SCP universe. That's a bad idea, Roden. Okay, so we're setting this two minutes into the past. Okay, so it's currently 4.11 a.m. And uh, Jack's brother's clearance is going to be revoked at 4.20, so nine minutes from right now. Almost like whoever gave the order knew when this was going to happen. Let's two go. Two minutes to the past. Remember this moment. I think it works. Paul, <laughs> what? How? It's, <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Stay calm, Jack. Stay calm. There's, there's two of you. You just fucking multiplied. We don't need two little fingers here. One's bad enough. This is exactly what was supposed to happen. That's, he's... He's me, a future version of me from two minutes in the future. <laughs> Your evil future self. Don't joke about that. We did it. Fucking incredible. I mean, just imagine the implications. We could warn people about disasters before they disasters happen. Before they happen. Cure, cure diseases, diseases before, before they, they spread. spread. I just had this conversation. <laughs> Still sounds good second time. Jesus Christ. Now go into the machine. To complete the cycle. Yeah. It is very yes. interesting, Eric. Of course. Wait, a... Paul, what are you doing? It's all a big loop, Jack. Great concept, I great game, but with some execution issues is how best I put it. In order to, well, be here. And what if you don't? There is no what if. I'm here, it's already happened. You saw it, Jack. <laughs> That's impossible. I got you that's, there, Morgoth. That's literally impossible. I mean, I can't even... There's no time to stop now. We need to test the other direction. Set the machine to five minutes to the future. This doesn't seem... Until permission from Operation Control... Well, we don't have permission from Operations Control to do this. Oh, boy. All right, let me check real quick. Is someone... Let me see if there is a DS... I don't think there's DSL settings on this. So yeah, I'm keeping it locked at 30 FPS. Um, just let me know if there is an issue and I'll mess around with the settings, but for right now, I think we're doing okay. Gotta get to bed before he plays some... Yeah, some was definitely on my list of things to check out, Roston. It'll point. have to be voted on, though. Soak this in, Jack. What were... What are you doing? Hey, well, it's Dominic Monaghan. You have to help me with this. We have to shut this thing down now. No, 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 stop him. Shut up, hold, hold on. the core. Hold on. We can't shut it down. Paul's still in there. Well, shut up, look shut at me. up. Look at me. Put the gun down and we can talk, okay? No, there's no time. You're not thinking straight. Put the gun down. Jesus Christ, Will. Time is going to end. Jack, you have to trust me. Or what? That's not good. No, I got a job. This is the definition of not doing good. No. Failure at exactly 4.15 a.m., so five minutes until his clearance is revoked. You okay? 
You think so? I'll find a way out. Make sure Will's okay. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> yeah, Alan Wake 2 might be an open world game, just because I know the original one was supposed I to be. I could hear Will's words in my head. So I presume Coming. they'd want to do it He's again. Going to end. Just look at this. Again, yeah, this is 2016 yeah. hardware. Oh, what the fuck is this? We broke. It should have worked. What the hell? This is crazy. This is permanent. Well. Oh, there just shook a little bit. Well. Yeah, this came out on the Xbox One originally. I don't think it was the console was strong enough for it. Hey, well. Hey there, stove. No state. What have we done? She warned me. I knew she was right. All this time. I warned Paul. This could all have been avoided. We're too late. Right, Isaac? The particle effects in this game are just ridiculous. I mean, just... Like, every... That's not graphical glitches, that's intentional. They literally designed all that into it. And you can bump into the chair. Okay, chair, let's just move you over here. So if you guys could stop time, would you, like, grab this chair, chuck it on someone's head, and then unfreeze time just to watch them be really confused? Just saying. There's a lot of uh, pranking you can do. This wasn't supposed to happen. Fix it up. Stutter. Collapsed. You can tell Microsoft's money in this. Like, the more the game goes on, like all the high-end actors. Microsoft definitely helped make this thing. Okay, let's get out of here. Come on! Can just get you to hack Well, if you hurry up, I can get down there. I didn't there. want to leave Paul. But there was no way to help him. I didn't know where he'd end up. Hurry! Strip them down and put them in the middle of a wedding party? <laughs> The actors are somewhat distracting, oh, actually. Hurry, this way. Yeah, like, that's something that I've had when you cast uh, high-end actors, too, is because you can never not associate them with the characters they played in the past versus having no-name actors who you only see them as the character in the story. So I, I, I get that and um, entirely sick. Jack, your hands. Gotta keep moving. Oh my. Yes, we are Neo. We are the one. <laughs> and we just Jack. killed a guy. You just. I just. just Go this way. Move. That was the first time my power started to manifest. An out of control burst of energy that saved Will. Jack, your proximity to the pulse. It. It must have altered your relation to the chrono. Will. What I just did back there. What the hell is happening? That's what I'm telling you. Oh, Not yeah, he's a superhero, right too. That's why there's a lot of arguments between Jesse versus Jack Explosion and a fight. Make time go bad. If time is an egg, then that egg is fucking broken. The time egg is fucked. What? Why is there an egg in Time this? egg is fucked, Jack. Didn't you hear him? There's a fracture in time. <laughs> it's breaking down, leading to the end of time and door. What? Locked. They cut my security clearance. And it ah, was literally right now is 420. Help. They cut it the Stay second back. he got to the door. I'll get it open. Yes, this is the game with the shift. Um, yeah, yes, it doesn't mean anything, so I'll say it. 
Imagine training for like 10 years at PMC when your first day you get shot by a time manipulating Sean Ashmore. <laughs> you know, at least you would get to the freaking uh, pearly gates and have a good story to tell St. Peter at that point. <laughs> I knew it all going Somehow during my play, if you never actually thought about the fact that Jack's actor was also an X-Men who could free stuff, I had no trouble with that. He's also a character, uh, he played in an episode of um, Fringe, actually, him and his twin brother. Well, more of them. Hide. Yeah, both uh, Lance Reddick and Sean Ashmore were in, uh, were in Fringe. And then Dominic here and Lance were in Lost. This. About the calculations, I tried to make you listen to me. By shoving a gun in my face? Yes, a gun. A universal symbol for shut the fuck up and listen to me. So I love that line. I love that line so much. God, the universal oh, symbol of shut the fuck up and listen to me. Okay. sure you didn't head back up You could have gone back and tried to get the service elevator out of here. This doesn't make any sense. How? Why are you even here? That's your biggest concern right now? Yeah, so, um, yeah, Sean's brother is uh, Aaron Ashmore. They're both actors. Let's go. Paul brought me here to clean Dude, up Dude, Fringe mess. is awesome. Don't lie, Bird. My mess. Do you even... Stop banging on things. They're literally right there, bro. That's the kind of recklessness a hobbit would do, Mary. Oh, that was Aaron in Warehouse 13? Didn't know that. No context for any of this, Jack. You weren't here. Oh, lost. A lot happens in six years. I never got all the lost hate, to be honest. I understand the arguments. This, I just personally it doesn't bother me. They're trying to kill us, Will. It's pretty goddamn person. Listen, getting you involved is the last thing I wanted. I, I'm sorry. Whoa. Hey there, elite man. Thank you so much. At least I think that's what that was. Hold on. Actually, it wasn't. Hold on. I need to do this. Come back over here because I'm not scrolled all the way up in the sub stream right there. Sid! <laughs> Sid, sorry. It was Sid that sub. Thank you so much, buddy. Welcome to our crazy train here. And Sarah did too an hour ago. Thank you. We got to give her the red carpet treatment. She has done amazing work for the channel, which when I go on my BRB break, you'll see more of it. All right, so Pulsarine Lab Clearance. Let's read this one. Pulsarine just had me go through every step of activating the machine in detail with him for over three hours. Do you have any idea what's going on with Project Promenade? Do you think he's replacing us? What about Dr. Joyce? All the stuff he said about how we won't be able to stabilize the Chronon field. What if he was right about the miscalculations? I know he comes across as a crank, but we came up with a lot of research we're now building on. I don't understand the implications if there's an error. But Joyce seems to think it was a serious business. Also, I tried to look up in the interview, uh, overview of the figures today, but all the files have been locked up by somebody named Martin Hatch from Monarch Solutions. I know they put some money into this project, but do they seriously have that much authority? I'm really confused. All right, let's get going. Factoring time is only going to get worse. We have to stop this before it's too late. How? First. Yeah, I know I'm better at the door thing. I'm looking out the window real quick. So, uh, yeah, this is what we're up against right now. That's not good. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate it, Sid. Okay, I'll do the door thing. Well, Hi. Hi there, buddy. Okay, we're actually at gameplay finally. After an hour. And because we're on hard, headshot run all the way. So, how this one is structured is that your standard pistol has infinite ammo, but you do have to reload, and any specialty weapons you get have ammo consumption. Jack, that was... I know. 
This is way out of hand. I'd used a gun before. I'd been in a couple tough spots. Never had an army of pro gunmen chase me. I feel like they left so much stuff to read for the second playthrough. Basically, like a lot of this stuff's not going to make full sense until you finish the game and Let's revisit it. But with the story that has to do with time, it's understandable. I was positive that the experiment would work, that the figures were correct. Because the specialists were a bunch of goddamn idiots. Their formulas were missing these variables entirely. You're seriously making corrections right now? Well, if they made them in the first place, we wouldn't be here. Okay. All right, so this is a gameplay function right here. So that is what we would call a quantum ripple. And we'll talk more about that once we get to a section that deals with it directly. But essentially, um, quantum ripples, if you find and activate them, will alter small details in the game. Not anything major, but small enough that you'll notice them. And it also unlocks um, additional documents not that you'll good. find later on. This is not good. There's the elevator to the So, lobby. like, for this one, see, we have ammo, but for the pistol itself... We have infinite. It's just to make sure you always have uh, ammo at any down. given time. Don't ask me. You tell me. Hey, wow. Care about this. Headshot, headshot. There's those two. So the great thing is you can hit them once to stagger them, and they have a very predictable recoil pattern to get the second headshot in. Come on. I've just played this game too much to the point where I headshot everything. It makes it a lot easier. So basically the Quantum Ripple, Sarah, was... Um, no let's see if I can head back real quick and show you. Not while I'm stuck. Did you hear that? They know our names. They knew we'd be here. They must be after the machine. So the Quantum Ripple the was a uh, whiteboard the right there with the equations for the machine. And if you did not examine it, they would stay incorrect, but William there just noticed that it was wrong and added new variables, so he changed the equation on the board. So now anyone who comes from here on forward will see a revised equation. And now that um, any of the researchers have that revised equation, they'll be able to act on it accordingly. All right, so basically this entire section, this is a very long thing. Um, Basically, Charlie Wincott is sending Liam Burke. These characters, uh, we we haven't got names for yet, but we'll meet them later. Um, basically, got a email chain from Amy Ferreira, which is the lady who uh, we met earlier who's running the protest, and is forwarding these emails to someone. So they basically hacked her emails and got the information. And this is Amy sending out all the protest information about, like, okay, first aid stuff, uh, setting up banners and size, press releases, um, and all the little... Tid tidbits of the whole thing. And that's really about the longest short of it. She's just getting all the preparation logistics done for the protest, and that information was forwarded over to Liam. Yeah, we've met... Li no, I know we've met Liam, Oliver, but we haven't given him a name yet, so I wasn't going to refer to it. So if you're playing for the first time, you wouldn't know who Liam is we until you come back and say, oh yeah, I've already met that guy. Monarch could be expecting that. We have to, Jack. It's important. To fix the fracture, I... I need... We need to get to my car. Okay, just just walk me through this, Will. Okay, time's broken. Fine. But now you're saying we could fix it? In theory, I built something for such an event years ago. But finding the countermeasure won't be easy. The countermeasure? What the oh, gotcha, Oliver. Yeah, no worries. I generally don't play with okay. subtitles, so I, didn't, I don't notice that what for happened? the most part. Maybe the door's still open. Let me try. Hi! Aw, oh, he's trying to protect us. Will? How long do you want to let him see keep sewing? Ah! Uh, we should leave him do that for another hour or so, right? Right? Can Jack keep the hiss out, though? No. Jack would not be able to keep the hiss out. Somehow I could focus and unfreeze Will. But freezing time means the, the sound can't first. travel, so there's an argument to be made there. She was right. About the fracture. About all of this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is say, you know what, give me your gun. You have no gun now. 
You have no gun now. You have no gun now. So when time unfreezes, they basically can't do shit. Sucks to be you. All right. So this is a thing from Liam Burke. Same character. And he's basically giving uh, information, instructions to all the different teams. So Bandit Squad. Don't want to be here when you Shh, start Will. Chill. Chill. Chill, Mary. All right. Bandit Squad establish an enforced perimeter around the university. Ensure quick arrival and departure of the Extraction Squad and the Corps. Prowler Squad. Move all civilians beyond moving dis uh, viewing distance of the extraction operation using cover story supplied. Contingency, if operation goes hot, then apprehend any witnesses of extraction operation. Raider Crew is intended to infiltrate the physics lab, block all exits, apprehend Jack and William, and assist the extraction squad in removing the core from the machine. Extraction is to remove the core from the time machine, go. lower the core, and basically get it out of there. Striker Squad is to remain in the underground parking garage as a last resort for containment measures. Steal all the guns. Yeah, because honestly, if they don't have any guns, they can't do anything. Like, I guess they can still strong arm you, but... This way. It's fine. Give me your weapons, give me your weapons, give me your weapons. Yeah, exactly. Apprehend or eliminate. If they're unable to keep them away from witnessing anything. And again, this is not a mil... This is not a uh, government agency. This is literally a private company that's doing this. I met this girl on my way here. And this is Amy. What are you doing? I'm gonna get her moving. Have a great night, Matt. Take it easy. She's not in freezing. It worked on you. Why isn't it working on the others? I don't know. It may have to do with chronon exposure. Look at them all. It's a goddamn invasion. What are they doing? Why? Imagine the scene if we got to see this in regular speed when it's times not frozen. How chaotic and freaking terrifying it must be for all of these. These college kids that are just here to try to not get the library torn down. That's all they're here for and things might get really bad for them. Oh my god, it's Dylan! That's that's not his name in this game. So some characters, if you walk up to them while it's frozen, you can hear them speak. He's like, hey, you're not a cop. But not I saw this guy earlier. He's part of the monarch operation. Maybe even leading it. Poor kid. He's seen like this guy. We can get to the parking lot through the ledge hall. You said you were FBC to undercover this. agents. Can happen. How? Beth Wilder. It's complicated. I'll explain in the car. Yeah, Monarch is definitely the quintessential "quote unquote" evil corporation, They're with a paramilitary them. organization working with them. Just by what we're seeing. Well, Totman doesn't really have anything in his office. Going first, just in case. What do we got over here? At least Noon has a desk and a computer. So, I, if I remember correctly, these are names of developers right here. These are some of the devs. Same thing here. You got some of the development teams. Knock off Umbrella, basically. All right, ready? We're going to go into you. the Organic Chemistry Lecture Hall. You ready for more? Give Amazon ten years, and this is what we're gonna see. No shit. Still just collapsed. For now. Uh oh. What's here? Oh no, no. My car. The patrol in the parking lot. Oh god, that's it's. Okay. Okay, Will. Calm down, okay? I'll take care of this. I'll I'll fight my way through. I'll get the car and I'll bring it around. Are you sure you can handle this? No. Are you sure you can fix time? Then we'll call it even. All right, we'll come back later. Alan Wake. Love this guy's stuff. <laughs> so Jack knows of Alan Wake right here by his own admission. All right, so it would take way too long to go through this entire blackboard here. But if you're curious, I do have a, just to do a shameless plug, I do have a full breakdown um, video that I've uploaded onto the channel. It's the just the... Um, 
report uh, blackboard analysis or something like that. You can find it if you check the Alan Wake uh, playlist. But some of the biggest ones I want to do want to point out though is AWE Alan Wake Experience or Altered World Events right down here. So they've already had those being shown. They mention House of Dreams right here. And they also have the spiral symbol, spiral into the depths of darkness. You got the spiral door in the Ocean View Motel and you got Campbell's Hero's Journey right here. Yep. So a lot of this stuff has been here for a long time with Remedy. That's why the second that I saw the spiral door in the controls, like, oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. All right, but before we go outside, I do need to uh, go get some more water and go in a quick bathroom or break. So give Here. me a second. You'll need the keys. So let's pause real quick. I'll be right back. And back. Hope you guys kept your uh, P's and Q's on there. I had my eye on you the entire time. <laughs> Jack, you'll need these. Hey, All right, Jack. let's grab the keys and head out there. Be careful. Yeah, okay, I, I will. <laughs> TV had a new nightmare fuel, yep. That Yeah, that's from... Um, the uh, writer DLC of uh, Alan grown. Wake. Started to sense things, premonitions, echoes from the past. Just got orders from Monarch Actual. They want us to find a car belonging to William Joyce while we're here. Got a plate number? It's coming. It's probably born on a neutron or some shit. Born on neutron or some shit. You know what? Just because that. Fuck you. Supposed to be in the goddamn time. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Sorry, that's all I hear when he says that line. Alright, where's your car, Will? You've been teleporting with nothing but documents for three days? Sounds about right. Where did I saw eyes on TV like that? Observer? It's actually, uh, weirdly enough, that's actually Sam Blake's eye. We ripped it right out of Alan Wake. I could see an echo of the past. Will, arriving at university. So we can also see, again, reflections of the past, like he mentioned right there. I hope I got them not too late. But that's... Seeing the past. Yeah, that's from Clerks Bird. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for catching the reference. You were not just there a second ago. Boom. Something clicked. 
I could reach out and stop time in a focused area. You don't know what you're doing. Well. All right, time powers, let's go. Fuck. They're coming from where I left Will. I gotta get back to him. All right, Fast. so freeze time, and then we can fire into the time bubble. And as soon as the time bubble pops, all those bullets fly at the exact same moment right at the back. Freaking awesome mechanic. You. Nope. How did you turn your back on? Chill. Almost out of ammo though. Switch back to the pistol. This new power is infinite full time, basically. Ah! There's one. Yeah, I, and every time you find one of these backpacks that's highlighted in blue, it just maxes out your ammo with whatever gun you're holding. You should never have an issue with running out of ammo in this game. I mean, never. Even on the hardest difficulty, never. There's no excuse. <laughs> All right. Let's go meet best girl. Director. Where is he? Where's my brother? They're taking him to the library. You might still be able to catch them. Why are you helping me? You're with them. It's more complicated than. Look, I don't know if you can make it, but you should hurry. That's the first time you saw Beth Wilder. Yeah. But definitely not the first time she saw me. Will. Will! In case anyone was curious, yep, that is Courtney Hope uh, once more. That is our one and only Director Faden's actor. Or actress, I should say. I gotta get to Will. This is her first role with Remedy. Yeah, like, she's in this, and actually Dylan's in this. So both Jesse and Dylan Faden are in this game in different roles. Now, Dylan plays a side character, so is not as uh, big, but Have to reach Will they're both here. Late. Supposed to take William, William Joyce, alive Joyce alive if he doesn't put up a fight. fight. Please, Please, let me go. Let me go. I, can I can shut, shut the, the hell up. Hell up. So just, just shut the fuck up, up, all right? right. Boss said to take him to the library. Wants to deal, What's to deal with this one first. Exactly. Like, Alan well, Wake, definitely you had to rely on resource management a lot more. Um, if you don't find the secret caches, it can get a little bit tough sometimes. But if you know where they're all at, you basically get enough grenades and uh, flare guns to be whatever. That, that's not even that bad either. Whoa! And we have our dog. Goodbye. Oh, but I just made him shoot his buddy in the chest. Shit! Oh, shit! Alright, let's see. I'm about to die. Where's he at? And there's our bullet time. Hey, take it easy, smoker. And it gives you perfect time to get your headshots in. Gotta get to the library. That's where they're taking you. What does what go into them, Roden? So after the darkness leaves their body, it's still a taken. It just, um, the darkness is no longer guarding, um, around their physical body. So that's really about it. Jack. 
My first one is how much destruction is already in there. Yeah. This stuff is crazy to begin with. Where is... There it is. I saw something. Oh, there it is. I'm trying to find where the rewind point is. It don't make sense. Make sense. Dragging this asshole to the asshole library? library? Airlift's Air already initiated. He should be gone by now. The time machine. You taking the time, the time machine? machine? Hey, hey. I said, I said no talking. Talk. Talk. No talking. <laughs> what did you... He's not physically there. You shouldn't bump into him. It comes very naturally. Everything breaks around this room right into the... Uh, if you remember how much surprise it was when Remedy showed control. Yeah, everything just falls apart. And that one, they, you definitely see the pre... Where they took the inspiration from, I should say. You still had no idea that Wilder was helping you? She wasn't the only one. Really? That's a that's, uh, Arisha's voice actor? I didn't... I didn't know that. Thanks for pointing that out. It's cool that they have him in here, too. Seriously, Gargoyle. These guards are probably... What the fuck is going on? Lights are out across the whole damn campus. Somebody cut. Open the choice! Dude, they're all over the place. Crap, I'm not hit that guy. He's trying to kill it. Oh, yeah, I didn't get him. Um, let's go this guy first. I would love to see how this looks in real time without the slowdown of all time effects. Yeah, I will. like to flash in real life no shit yeah because this is kind of in real time you see how much like he doesn't really he leaves somewhat okay, of an after image but it's library. very minor oh crap i forgot i forgot an easter egg damn it i forgot to look at it so before we get into the elevator w before jack and uh no will get into the elevator get to will. after the very one of the first encounters if you look at one of the books um, there is a book on quantum physics written by Sam Lake with Sam's face on it. I completely forgot to look at it. I apologize. But yeah, he's popped in here as well. Nope, not that direction. Yeah, he was... I apologize for missing that. Ooh, they got a comic fest about an eyeball that looks very much... Come popping out of a hand mirror, which looks very much like the TV set that I have. Hmm, coincidence. Yep, so these are their old gods. Again, same poster. I think this might have been when they first used Northlight. I, I don't quote me on that. It's a library. I need to return some fucking books. HQ, we've got William Joyce in the library. Waiting orders. Over. Will. They took him to the library. All right. Let's I gotta find a way in. I gotta get to him fast. Alright, let's get on in there. Alright, before we do anything else, we will have to take a quick pause because this is probably one of the most relevant tells, the Easter eggs in the game right here. I don't know if the, that's the only location in Lunkhood where I know that that book's at, but we can keep our eye out for it. So, if you look right here, this is a library. It's, uh native to the town. It's about 100 years old, and it is the Edward Norton Lorenz Memorial Library. So, all you gotta do is do a quick Google search on Edward Edward Norton uh, Lorenz, and he is actually the heralded as the grandpappy of chaos theory and the butterfly effect. So, there have been uh, research into that before, but he's the one who really solidified it. So, Edward Lorenz was a meteorologist, um, 
that was doing research into predicting weather systems and ended up in falling into the study of chaos theory. And anything, if anyone knows anything about this game who's played it so far, chaos theory and the butterfly effect are a big thing in it. So much that the Lorenz attractor is a term that represents a three-dimensional modeling of the uh, mathematics of chaos theory. And it, get, it, when you look at it in three-dimensional space, it looks like butterfly wings, hence why we get the term butterfly effect from. And that was later uh, talked more about by Michael Creighton in one of his books that had to do with that exact concept. But you also keep in mind that Monarch, being the name of Monarch Butterflies, also Monarch Programming if you get into the MK Ultra stuff. So Lorenzo Tractor looks like butterfly wings, butterfly effect. Monarch uses but a stylized butterfly as their corporate logo as well. So there's a lot of stuff right here. Where did that a come? lot of stuff. Just with that one thing. <gasps> yep. Actually, weirdly enough, I think it was originally a gull rodent. The original expression was a gull's uh, one flutter of a gull's wings can uh, create the uh, hurricane, and they later changed it because butterfly was more poetic. Yeah, the sound of thunder actually came out after this, Andre. So yeah, that entire idea it was it, like, the butterfly effect became more culturally known um, after the song uh, "Sound of Thunder" by Michael Crichton, but. The Lorenzo, if you look at the Lorenzo tractor, it it's a stylized version of a butterfly wings, and that's how the actual mathematics looks. Well, it's weird. Here I thought it was going to gonna be a quiet night, but it sounds like things have taken a real bad turn down at the anti-monarch protest at River Point University. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I've just heard about security personnel in the employee of Monarch Solutions detaining students. Why isn't there subtitles with this? I don't want to jump the gun here. This is unconfirmed, and obviously I don't know the details, but no matter how you slice it, it sounds like a bad scene. You know I'm not a big fan of Monarch or how they do things, but at the same time, I hope nobody's going overboard with this protest thing. It's just a goddamn building, people. It ain't worth anybody getting shot over. Although, if they are shooting people over, that's some heinous bullshit right Take there. it easy, Sid. Sleep well, all right? Take it easy, buddy. The radio host on here is pretty chill. I love that dude. Yeah, the movie wasn't that great, Christopher. I agree with you. Like, I think Jurassic, the original Jurassic Park is one of the only uh, Crichton films that actually was good. Like, I, um, I haven't seen Sphere yet, and I have read the book, but I don't know more past that. Come on, I don't have time for this. I haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, loom code. Gotta slow that thing down somehow. I think it got the point across, though. But then again, I haven't read uh, Sound of Thunder, so I can't really compare. All right, now we're gonna get into our puzzle platforming. We gotta freeze time on this thing, and then hop on top of it before it falls. Ugh. Nailed it. Yay! Really, Bird? Uh, Max was unaware of MK Ultra and that stuff. I guess unless you really look into that kind of stuff, you really don't pay attention too close to pen or you're not aware of it if you don't really pay uh, study that stuff. But you know me, I study random shit. <laughs> this is Airlift Prime. We've got the time machine core in transit. Hey, hands where I can see. We did not do that. the hell is going on around here someone just took that guy out it wasn't us no clue uh you love this a concept they introduce for you the inertia of the changes which is something that helps with many other time travel stories exactly it gives you a basis um for a lot of time travel stuff let me see where are we at okay i gotta flip the page on my collectibles luckily that radio is the only one in this section the rest of it's gonna be all combat yeah, someone, Sarah. I'm not going to say who. HQ, we've got William Joyce in the library. Awaiting orders. Got Over. That is a reach, dude. I recognize it now.
The library is ready to blow. Now? And we're in the map library as we speak. This is not good. Hi, guys. I'm sorry about this, Arish. <laughs> Oh, I was just saying the Jurassic Park, the original is probably... Like, I, I can't even say it's the best adaptation because I know there's a lot of changes from the original book. But I'll be honest, I've only ever read Sphere by Mon Crate, and I haven't read any of their other books. His other books. So I, I can't really mention much. But I, I need to see the film. I think it has, like, um, Sharon Stone, Samuel L. Jackson, and... What's his face from My Heart Huckabees? He was only his cousin, fair enough. Why are you taking me here? It's a library. I need to return some fucking books. HQ, we've got William Joyce in the library. Awaiting orders. Over. Okay, he's here something somewhere. How do they get away with this shit? Well, they, they talked about it at the beginning of the game. Um, let's take a look. Uh, let's go back to some of the collectibles real quick. Um, stem, uh, purchase flyer. Here it is. Nope, not that one. Uh, Rev report, Monarch timeline. So basically, when they first got going, there were some uh, questions about it. But in 2001, they purchased the media outlets within Riverport. And no one started asking questions from there on forward. Basically, they control the media within this area. So, they basically do whatever they want. And no one will ever know about it. So, Rudd, what you're telling me is they're about to retire and become a baker? Is that what you're saying? And then I came in here and just popped them in the face? That sucks. And if you get that reference, I'm going to give you a fist bump. next ability. Boom! Just like the rock shield that Jesse has, we got our time shield. And as an added bonus, it heals us. Remember TNT that uh, Amy's uh, phone was actually already hacked by Charlie Wincott from uh, Monarch. And her emails were forwarded over to him. So they have technological supremacy as well. Oh my god. Run away! There we go. Give me that head shot right there. Hi there. I'm just really bad at this. We got that guy. Where's everybody at? Just one more. Perfect. Hi there. Goodbye. Wait, no, there is one guy over there. Um, come on. Come on. Pull up. There we go. Hi there. Bye now. Will. Like I said, even on the hardest difficulty, you could get to this game pretty if simple if you right. just... Make sure you use all of your powers and aim for the head. I got a whole new batch of messed up shit I need you to explain. I love Yeah, Jess yeah, is looking at Jack is like, why are you, car? why are your powers like this fancy? Color. Are you rich? Get a new one. <laughs> no, Jack. I need them. His powers have nothing to do with the board or objects of power though. It's Hold just science. <laughs> I'll take you shopping. It's a fucking briefcase. A briefcase that contains something I need in order to. I'm gonna let them come to me. And you didn't think to spell that out to me before. I'm a little busy getting kidnapped. Yeah, well, it's not too late to leave you here. All right, here we go. The hell you Hi there. That's part of the messed up shit I need to explain. You got any theories about being able to manipulate time? No. Ooh, I saw a shotgun. Come to me. Hi there. Goodbye. Oh, 
Oh crap, heal. Heal. There we go. Any more? Yeah, we got one more way back there. Hi there. Bye bye now. Alan's just like, why can't I have those powers? Yeah, Alan is the only one. Uh, is that all of them? I think even Max yeah. Payne technically has accelerated so. healing, healing as a result of the Valkyr overdose and bullet time, but Alan is the only one without like combat-related superpowers. Granted, he can manipulate reality by writing it, but he has no superpowers himself. He has to behave like an everyman, a random person. Why? Who is she? She knows about the fracture. We're on the hardest difficulty, her. Isaac. Glad you trusted somebody. Yeah, so Max Payne simple, is a, in my head canon. He's essentially safe. a super soldier. <laughs> Look around you, Will. Does this feel safe to you? This isn't my fault. Hold on. Beth warned me this would happen. Beth warned him. I did everything in my power to stop it. But you never told me any of this. I couldn't just. How long have you known? We don't have time for this now, Jack. We have to get to that briefcase. Okay, sorry, I gotta pause. So yeah, basically Max Payne, because of the Valkyrie overdose, is essentially a super soldier with a uh, heightened um, combat morale, endurance, and everything. Jack has time powers, Jesse has supernatural powers, and Alan, he writes books. Yep, we can see how this works. <laughs> All right, let's go, buddy. I'll call you Volp then, uh, Isaac. And we'll go from there. Let's move before more. And yet, Alan is still the coolest. Absolutely. All right, let's go. Jack. Let's get out of here. Oh, hi! You're back. necessary <laughs> think about this you don't know what's at stake i know exactly what's at stake that's why i'm here you believe you can stop what's coming i'm giving you one chance to change your mind this path it's already said it can't be changed the past the future <gasps> i've seen it i've lived it for 17 years 17 years it was you the first experiment come with me and we can see this through or hold on to your hope burn with it now listen i built a device i can stop this i can you can't this is madness there's no harm in trying there is that's why i can't risk you opposing me will it doesn't have to end like this we can't just let this happen i'll never stop trying it took me years to come to terms with what must be done but we don't have years wait Trigger. I never wanted this. Well, see you, Charlie. Ah, uh, I mean, Will. And we gotta skip, unfortunately, because copyright. Actually, I think I can mute it. Maybe. Hold on, let me try this. Nope, I can't. Skip it. <laughs> and here we are. And boom, end of act one. So yeah, um, 
Isaac, my thoughts on the original one. So I don't think the return trailer is going to be 100% what they're going to call upon for Alan Wake 2. However, aspects of it are going to be showing up. I fully think Alex Casey is going to be a character, as they showed in the return trailer. It's going to roughly show Alan coming back with a uh, Mr. Scratch character showing back up as well. And I hope Saga Anderson makes it in his, at, at the same time. And we know that an FBI agent, agent named Alex Casey was requesting FBC documentation on Alan's disappearance. And there we have in the return trailer, Alex Casey researching and uh, or investigating, I should say, Alan's disappearance. So you can see like echoes all over the place, but I don't think it's going to be exact. Yep, and we're there. But guess what, guys? We are not done. No, no, no. This is just the end of act one but we still have we're not going to go into act two but there's still a lot more content before we finish this whole section up if anyone has uh links for the actress's social media just to check what she's doing which oh i don't i have no clue i don't even know who the actress is Linko, to be perfectly honest um if we to be honest if we see jesse in alan wake 2 it means the hiss invasion is over or it's going to be like an easter egg at the very end my thinking is most likely we'll see Agent Estevez, who is the one, I believe, who's in charge of the uh, Cauldron Lake uh, monitoring station that they erected in the um, at the Cauldron Lake Lodge. That's The Bureau set up a permanent monitoring station there. So she's still in town, and the sheriff's father is a former FBC agent, so we'll probably get, at least see those. But that's as far as I can tell right now. Anyways, let's continue. Junction number one. My name is Paul Serene. I founded Monarch Solutions 17 years ago with a very clear purpose. There are those who would question my actions. I'm recording this as a final statement of vindication, a testimony of how things came to be. I've always been devoted to my mission, never deterred from my goal, no matter the sacrifice, because I've seen where this leads. I've seen where it all ends. We have a problem. No word from Jack Joyce's transport. It should have arrived here by now. We may have a traitor on the inside. You're due for your treatment. I'll find who's behind this. Find Jack. That's her priority. Get your best man. Oh, back. you're good, Sarah. You There's can fangirl more. anytime she's on stream. I love Beth. Jack's level of interference led to unexpected complications. Witnesses from the university were transported here. You need to take a look. We can't afford any further obstacles at this stage of the plan. Now, I see two options. We could use force, remove any loose ends. But if those witnesses disappear, the public will start asking questions, potentially turn on Monarch. All clear, sir. Lance Reddick is a freaking amazing. I, I agree, Andre. Everything he does is just phenomenal. But that leaves us with the, the loose ends. Precisely. The choice is yours, but keep in mind. The men will view your decision as a unified strategy. Whoa, your head just oh. twisted the wrong way. And here's the ram again. <laughs> I want this delivered to my office. What is it? A reminder. Quantum Ripple number two. So before, if we never noticed this, this would have just been packed away in the storage facility. But because we noticed it, the ram is now being sent to Paul's office. I suggest we deal with the issue at hand. Liam Burke over there can explain the situation in more detail. Of course. How long until the core is ready for transport? It'll be en route to Monarch headquarters in less than an hour. Installation should be complete before the gala. Good. 
Yep, broils. Absolutely, Isaac. I, I'm actually rewatching Fringe right now. I love it. Jack would never understand the necessity of what I'd done. It wasn't the death William deserved. But his knowledge posed too great a risk to our plan. All right, so we got dossiers on both uh, Jack and Will here. So let's look at the first one real quick. The men are waiting hey, for input. Hatch, hold on, it's fine. All right, so William Joyce, classification project consultant with Project Promenade, witness to the core heist operation, objective capture life, if possible, delivered to Paul Serene. Well, you hear about the th library? that didn't happen. Serene brought down the whole building. Relevant just to take out that background: a strange brother of Jack Cronin, Joyce, man. renowned physicist, proposed Talk existence of Cronon Field at age 19. Shh, he's listening. Invented first time machine, first time machine prototype, developed countermeasure, joined Project Promenade as a consultant after the death of Dr. Kim. Notable qualities, history of exhibiting erratic behavior, undiagnosed but likely suffers from a schizo, uh, schizophreniform disorder, highly intelligent, receives warnings of fracture from an unknown female source, may have received knowledge of chronon related monarch operations, will refuse to accept the inevitability of end of time, may lead to an unpredictable behavior. Briefings. Dr. Joyce will be present in the time machine lab during the onsite, uh, onset of the fracture at 4.15 a.m. All exits have been covered by Prowler team. Radar teams will be waiting at 416 to breach the time machine room. William Joyce will be apprehended upon entry. You just started to finish season two. Oh, dude, season three is where it goes crazy. I, I'm on se episode two of season three for like my sixth rewatching. It's nuts, right, Isaac? How season two ended? It's freaking crazy. It was the first time I'd visited the Ground Zero operation in ages. The location I'd arrived in when I went 17 years back in time. The location where my fate was sealed six years ago. Okay, so basically something happened here, and it gets like radiating effect. The further away from this point, the weaker it gets. And now we got Jack's dossier. We had Jack in custody, but I was starting to witness visions from the future which made it clear that could change very soon. Wait, you said pyramids colliding somewhere, Loon Code? Are you talking about these right here? Oh, yeah, for the hourglass symbolism again. Yep. Good eye. Okay, let's read this one off. Civilian witness of the core heist. Objective capture alive if possible. Deliver to Paul. Relev uh, relevant known information. Known friend of Paul Serene before incident. Parents deceased. Raised self in teen years as brother became distant. A uh, criminal record in Massachusetts, grand theft auto, simple assault, attempt to rob or steal, left for report in 2010, never returned until the incident. Received weapons training in Laos, light and heavy firearms. Arrested for weapon-related charges in 2015, charges were dropped. Relevant qualities, history of violent behavior when pushed, lack of respect for authority figures, no knowledge of the fracture or monarch operations, onset of fracture will render Jack Cronon enabled. Very much like a PR utilitarian who's been bound to something. May possess low-level Cronon abilities. Briefing. Jack Joyce will be present in the Time Machine Lab during the onset of the fracture at 6.14 a.m. All exits are to be covered. Uh, Raider team will uh, breach at 4.16. Approach Jack with caution. He will be Cronon enabled at this time. Cronon abilities predicted to manifest to not manifest until two hours after the fracture onset. Apprehend immediately. This poster is something I have a flashback once in a jelly. Jesse's childhood incident was described. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know if he has ice powers just yet. Sir, who is this? Amy Ferrero. She's one of the witnesses. Awaiting your orders. It absolutely is, Saber. Very much connected. Alright, so this is our first junction point. My powers grew stronger, even as the Cronon Syndrome worsened. I could choose a path that would become the actual future, but it wasn't optional. The moment wouldn't end until I made up my mind. So, essentially, we, can, we have to make a decision at each junction point, and whatever we picked will alter the game from here on moving forward. But we get to see a brief glimpse at what will happen before we make this decision. Yes, and his visions are... I, eh, 
The thing is with predicting the future, very much like chaos theory, that's why it's so relevant, is even though we make this one choice, you can't predict how it's going to end, but you can get a general idea. So hardline, if we go with the hardline option, this means that we are going to execute every witness that was there at the university, including Amy here. Any potential threats to our plan need to be erased. Monarch would take a hardline approach. Crush all obstacles, eliminate all witnesses. It would be harsh. But I had made hard choices for the greater good before. I dug through the area and I found everything I could on your bro. This is messed up, man. I trusted Monarch. But the people of Riverport would turn against us. You our secrets would be safe, but the public would hate us, and Jack would gain new allies. Monarch's got no authority to stop you, and you tell that to everybody on that bridge. Initialize a PR campaign. I want to stay. And that violence was because of Jack. Joyce. Monarch would take a PR-friendly approach and manipulate the public into siding with us. Our lies would give us control. The manhunt continues as authorities search for Jack Joyce. Hey, somebody sneak around down there. Hey, I think that's Jack Joyce! We'd use the media to expose, then hunt for Jack. I uploaded all the files I stole on that USB stick from the Monarch security station. But... The eyewitnesses would be out there, and Jack would learn our secrets. Okay, so essentially, if we go hardline, the entire town will go to Jack's side, but we execute everybody here, including Amy. We will get an ally that is not her, and it is actually, weirdly enough, the cab driver who is played by Dylan Faden's actor. Or if we go the PR route, the entire town will be against you because they'll believe that you are a terrorist. And then things will happen along that path. However, we will get uh, valuable intel on Monarch operations. So, here we go. What do you guys want? I will leave it up to you. Honestly, Sarah, I want to go the Dylan Faden way too. I want to go the hardline route because we get to spend more time with his actor. And I already have recordings for um, the PR route for the things that... Because there, there is something that changes and it changes a lot of the documents you get in the game. And I have record audio recordings of them that we can play both of. But I will leave it up to everybody to make the decision. Yeah, it sounds like 50-50. Alright, I'll give it another 30 seconds or so. Oh geez, we are at 50-50. <laughs> like, honestly, I want to go hardline. That's my personal preference, because it'll make... Um, the run again that gives you more weird crazy uh theories about the game itself and again we get to spend more time with this actor but i will respect your decision oh gosh i need to go over here 50 50 <laughs> jesus okay So, basically, Isaac, what we're doing is we're voting on which junction path we're going to be taking here. But we literally ended up 50-50, so we're going to go with my initial one, and we're going to go the hardline route. It sucks, 
but it does give us more information in terms of theory crafting. All right, guys, don't hate me for this. Let's go. We're taking the hard line. Any potential threats to our plan need to be erased. Take her and the others to the Ground Zero operation. Make so it quick. Any of the other choices after this, Painless. I really have no preference. This is the only one that I wanted to uh, do the no. certain way. Wait. Please! There's no other way out. We're going through the machine. Oh, wait. No! Jack! This way! Jack! I use my power to guide us. To decide how to best prepare for the inevitable end of time. That gives the chosen few a chance to survive. I've seen the end of time. Yep, so only 24% of the community actually went this way. Yeah, I've played both options, so I've I've seen how it plays out in both ends, but... Alright, so Junction 1, we're going hardline. There's going to be more than this, and that one will be 100% um, up to the poll, and I will not participate whatsoever unless it's a 50-50. But, real quick, I do need to run to the bathroom, so I'll be t two seconds. And we are back. Yeah, sure, Isaac. So, essentially, just to recap what's happened up to this point is uh, our main character, Jack, got an uh, email from his best friend, Paul, to um, and basically agreed to come back to his hometown to help him out with something. They, He invited him to the physics building at this Riverport University. They activated uh, the, t the time machine, essentially. What happened was uh, Will's brother... Uh, or um, Jack's brother Will is a uh, quantum physicist and warned everybody not to activate the machine because there was issues with the equations and it would cause a huge issue and they shut down all funding so uh, Paul was forced to do it in secret in the dead of night so no one knew and it caused a fracture in the uh, fourth dimensional space in the fabric, the particles that constitute uh, time 
And as soon as that occurred, we're immediately getting hunted down by Monarch Forces, who shows up. Paul disappears into the time machine, and then he appears here. Uh, basically, 17 years uh, future version of himself. And that's about the extent of what we know. He decided to go with the hardline path, which means anybody who witnessed the events at the university are going to be executed. But anyways. And we are back. Gotcha. No worry, Isaac. Yeah, this is a very dense game. It's There's a lot of information. I'll just leave it at that. All right, guys, you ready? We're still not done. We're still not done with this. You guys want some TV? We're going to watch some TV. Ah. Episode 1, Monarch Solutions. So these episodes change based upon our junction decisions and the quantum ripples. What do you want? Names, witnesses, anyone who might implicate Monarch. See those two men on either side of you? I'm going to stand. I'm going to leave. And the one on your right is going to shoot you in the head. Fuck you. Hmm. In the uh, PR option, he basically makes her read a uh, prepared statement and puts her on TV as the face saying that Jack is a terrorist and caused all the problems. Wait. Not in this version, though. What's wrong with you? And this is the same guy who is running security that Jack bumped into at the very beginning of the game. Apparently, he doesn't like what just happened. No, oh, they just teleported. Rest in peace, Amy. That's the only downside of this path is you have to kill her. Seems your work's been undone. We just lost communication with Jack Joyce's transpo. How the fuck does that happen? Knowing how isn't important. You just need to find him. Wincott is working on a location. Great. What is it? What? Something's wrong. University. That's not how we operate. It was sloppy. Have all your operations gone smoothly? Go home, Liam. Wait for the call. So not everybody who works with Monarch is on board with this approach to what they're handling. Three missed calls from Emily. Can't make it out with that with zip tying a few eggs. That's horrible, Oliver. <laughs> this is an official. Okay, now, City Hall servers are on a different platform than the rest of your report because they have all these government contractors who need two-way access. That means weaknesses. So, all Where? we have... Huh? Where? Where what? Where, oh, weaknesses, you said. <laughs> Love this guy. Up, Shut the fuck up, Renner. <laughs> now, all we have to do is identify as a client who had previous access, maneuver our way through all the holes poked in the firewall, and assuming all these ports are just left open, then all we have to do is use protocol numbers and just move our way up. Simple? Sure. Come on. This guy's great. 
Come on. And we're in. Eh? Street cams, dash cams, computers at headquarters. I mean, hell, I could hijack police scanners and put out an APB on your mom. What the fuck is that? What is that? It's coffee. Yeah, I know, it's coffee. What the fuck is it doing on my desk, Brenner? Have you ever seen one of these? Hmm? <laughs> you know what it is? Coaster. 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 Yeah, do they have these in Idaho? Iowa. Whatever. I don't care what state you're from, yeah. use it. <laughs> Tell me what's next, Brenner. I don't know. I know you don't know. And that makes me sad for you. All we do now- <laughs> Alright, sorry, I just have to pause here. I'm gonna pause the, t the show a lot. I do this- If you're watching TV with me normally, I will- It'll take us an hour and a half to get through a 50-minute episode. But, um... You guys have called me on it before, but yes, I have coasters on my desk. I use them all the time for that very reason, because I have hardwood uh, furniture. And my coasters I got at um, a convention, and they are five of them, which are the symbols for Magic the Gathering's element system. Sorry, I just had a comment. Let's go. Now, we draft an email to Mayor Rackley letting him know that Monarch is offering their private security forces, which of course he's going to take, because at this point, without him knowing, we've tied both his hands behind his back when he wasn't looking. <laughs> and that, Brenner, is how you take Riverport under Monarch control. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> and in the other version, if you're doing the PR route, what he does is he gets blackmail material on one of the uh, city politicians. And basically makes him go out of his way to... Basically, they control the politicians so that he'll just do whatever they need to do. Shit. Mr. Hatch, perfect timing. Just... Winka, where are we with Joyce? Joyce, yeah. I, uh, I've got the cameras. I just need to find a locale. Keep an eye on it. And when you find him, contact Burke directly. I think we have a traitor in our midst. Traitor. What the f Hello? Well, let me, but I want to let you go, Mr. Hatch. Thank you. He, he hung up on you. It's it's fine. Is that Martin Hatch? Get the fuck out of my office. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's sometimes how I feel when I'm training someone. <laughs> I, I swear I'm not a dick, though. I promise. No, um, this is actually a regular game. It's just they have television episodes built into the video game itself that the episodes change based upon your decisions in the game itself. So, no, it, it's a game game, but we're just... The very end of each chapter is essentially watching an episode of television. M? So we're getting more information on this guy, who was one of the antagonists in Chapter 1. He's kind of our main character in the episodes. Things have been really bad at work. I'm sorry. I just... I dreamt you were a cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these big furry bear paws way too big for your body it was a strange creature but I knew it was you so an FMV is a um, it's an basically games that uh, use pre-recorded videos rather than uh, sprites or um, in-game engine what stuff which no it's not field an manager in the history of field managers so she does not know what he does Baby, you haven't been home in two days. Your mom's being difficult. Oh, I'm, I'm, she is, I'm being, being difficult, huh? She's being very difficult. <laughs> He's having a baby. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's the baby. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay. You <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember those old uh, uh, what VHS games back in the 90s. No, no. 
So random. So essentially the main game follows Jack's story and the TV show follows the Monarch's story so we get things from both ends of the spectrum. That kind of meet in the middle. Go. Yeah. Berg, we got a lead on Joyce. What is it? I was able to track his transport to a warehouse on Burgundy and Wilkins. Inside ground zero perimeter. Sending you the coordinates now. Great, here we go. So essentially the whoever was driving the van that Jack was thrown into diverted away from the plan. Something happened there. I gotta go. Did I miss it? Uh-oh, what's there on the TV stand on the bottom right there? Hmm, that looks an awful like the sudden stop by Alan Wake. I guess the Burks are a fan. Who knows? Hold off for just a moment, but from the reports I'm getting, it seems like this is becoming a very... Yeah, same here, Crash. Like, the whole idea is really cool, but I think it would have worked better as if they... Liverport police are on. I think the whole idea of having a TV show and a game intertwined with each other would have worked better if the show was actually on TV and not included in the game itself. I think that would have worked a lot better. Because some people who want to play the game don't want to sit and watch a TV show. They come for the game. But now they're forced to watch the TV show, so there's a little bit of resentment that popped in there. But anyways, I'll moving on. That citizens stay clear of the area and the but time has been randomly freezing, just like it did in the game. Now that I think about it, Goal Island is the place that they purchased and built the Monarch Tower. Again, the goal was the original quote for before the butterfly effect became a thing. It was actually about a goal. And then they changed it to butterfly afterwards. So I wonder if that's a reference to it. Never thought about it. Hmm. Demolition is not yet known, but foul play has not been ruled out. Dozens have already begun picketing outside of Monarch's headquarters, demanding answers. Our thoughts are with the families of Amy Ferraro and all others who are missing at this time. More on this story as it develops. Hold. There's been a development. Jack, you've already seen it. Tonight on the island, he'll be there and he'll want revenge. I need him stopped now. I think our focus may be somewhat misguided here. Your <laughs> the Matrix is running at Windows 98. <laughs> shouldn't take it so lightly. <laughs> Joyce got lucky. He escaped. He's gone. He wouldn't be foolish enough to come back. Our only vulnerability is within, Paul. You should see that. Telling me what I've already seen. You're not thinking clearly. You need your treatment. Paul's sick, essentially. You've been the face of Monarch for all these years, Martin. Well, let's get clear on something. This is still my ship. And I simply don't want to see you go down with it. Just find him. Thank you for joining us. We're going to take you live to a press conference. Riverport's own Mayor Rackley is currently holding regarding last night's violence. Yeah, 2016 hardware for this University. game. The Riverport Police Department is currently So there's going to be a conversation here between two guys at the table. Just pay attention. Monarch Solutions is lending a hand in this investigation. I want to encourage the people of Riverport to offer them every assistance in finding those responsible. Police are not releasing bacon, any bacon, sandwiches until they complete their investigation. Thanks. A government bill to crack down on laboratory experiments on end numbers is expected to be law today. Over in the lab at the university this morning. 
Someone solved the equation. Huh? I've just received word that... It's so like little stuff like that is where the quantum ripples come in. I can, it doesn't seem like a big thing, but they noticed that the equation was solved when Will and Jack w walked by it. Will fixed it, and it pops up there. So there's going to be a little symbol on the top right of the screen that shows that quantum ripple uh, animation, whatever that happens in the TV show, just so you can pay attention to it. Monarch security forces have teamed up with local police to hopefully keep the people of Riverport safe as this very unsettling story continues to unfold. What's up, IT? And you wish I was IT. Hey, you don't have security clearance being here. Security clearance? Access granted. I thought you might have been up all night, so... You didn't get the runny kind, did you? No, it shouldn't be. Oh! Boots are on the desk. It's cool, they're new. Oh, man. Fiona Miller. Terminated. You're fired. So what's the, what's the 411? He's putting up with her, though. <laughs> Four Boots yeah, on his desk, Jesus. <laughs> uh, everything's, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. There was a shootout at the university last night. Nothing I couldn't handle. All right. You think they're going to cancel the party tonight? Are you kidding? No way. Hatch knows what he's doing. You going to go? To a party? Me? Go to a party. Uh, we can roll together if you want. Do it, buddy. Suck up the courage. Come on. Okay. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> Total simp. <laughs> okay, buddy. What are you gonna wear? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll go naked. Nice, I like that. Oh, um, I gotta get back to my desk. Cringe, so. dude, cringe. See you tonight? Yeah. He's obviously not very socially adept. I'll see you tonight. He's a savant yeah. attack, but <laughs> doesn't know how to interact with people. <laughs> buddy. Come on, Charlie. Sam from Transformers. Yeah, I can kind of see that. His eyes are her eyes are up there, right? Okay, Sarah, you can start fangirling now. Yeah, it's still a game, bird. Well, I'm not playing it right now, but we'll uh, as soon as the episode's over, episode or act two of the game will start. Liam, this isn't what it looks like. Fuck, Beth. I really didn't want it to be you. You need to listen to me. Step away from the van. Step away right now. Drop the gun. I can't do that. You have three seconds till I pull. I have better reflexes. And you're a marksman for shit. Yes, Isaac, I'll be ending it after it. We're gonna be doing one act at a time for the streams. No. No! Gosh, he's gone. Do you see what's happening? The stutters. More and more. Beth, Beth, what is, what is going on? Time is breaking down. The end is coming, and Joyce could be the key. Wait, wait, what's up? wait the, the, the end, the end of what? Beth, the end of, of, the end time, of what? Of time, of time, of life as we know it, the entire universe, gone. And somehow, Monarch has been preparing for it. They knew it was coming. I'm with you on this, TNT. There's this thing. It's called a lifeboat protocol, and it can save us, at least some of us. Put your hands on your head, down on your knees. Brown. Wild. Yeah, when you're literally Not right, point blank, there's no need for aiming. Joyce just took down half my men. Think maybe he had some help? We're unarmed. I was responding. I not to give call. a fuck. Hey, I am with Monarch. On your knees. Hey there, Haley. Thanks so much for the sub. For Very much appreciate it. And for you. Now. Just do what he says. Do not let them take us. We'll never find the lifeboat. Think about Emily. Just relax. Leo. Shut up.
That's our director right there. It's lifeboat protocol. She what doesn't even it? have superpowers right know. now. But Dr. Kim was at the center of it. Dr. Kim? If you can get into his lab. That's impossible. It's been closed up since he disappeared. Do you know anyone who could get you in? And one thing that I'd have heard as a uh, negative on the show is it kind of takes you out of the game a little bit. But whatever. Oh, that's gross. Thanks, Fiona. It's disgusting. I'm sorry, I'm with that. Runny yolks, especially on a sandwich. No. Uh-uh. Holy. Yep, Liam was compromised right there. And Charlie knows about it, which Amber. is even worse. Yeah, that's this and again, this is definitely the biggest complaint this. of the game as a whole. Oh, which is hundred percent understandable. Golden boy. And I think there was a quant the quantum report right there too where they're posing with the Ram statue. Gotcha. Charlie, I need a favor. Yeah. Um, could we talk somewhere in private? Uh, you're really ratting on. Right. In your office, will be good. It'll be really quick. Yeah. So what happened with Joyce? Oh, uh, there's nothing there. Huh? There's nothing there? He, like he just wasn't there? Like, or what? No, Hatch. He um, he reassigned me. He wants me to. Secure the perimeter lab on the island. He thinks Joyce might go there. I hear you, sir. He sent me here to get access to it. Can you help me out? Yeah, sure. Let me. Uh, I don't know, Maple. It's probably just a mistake. Thank you. Possible she didn't know that. You know, it's really funny that, you that, the, them. that lead on Joyce was no good because. Oh. Uh, it sure looks like he was there. And that other guy kind of looks like you, but that's weird because you work for Monarch, and that guy clearly, <laughs> clearly does not work for Monarch. Shit. Yeah, I can zoom in. Hey, hey, wait, stop killing me, because I just put a high security alert out on your ass. You got about 20 seconds. You're bluffing. Hey, you're welcome to stick around and try to find out. You know what I'm going to do to you. I have a pretty good idea what Monarch's going to do to you. In about 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Good luck, buddy. Nine. Eight. We need all points converged on Liam Burke. He's armed and dangerous. Yeah. Listen up, he's on level B. Probably near just the forgot main overpass. Just a reminder, you want our and we don't know if the uh, cameras that Charlie tapped into, they originally had those abilities or, or those capabilities, or if it's something new he just did so she wouldn't have a way of knowing. I, I really can't say. Yeah, the brains of the brawn here are going off each other. <laughs> Idiots! Damn, <stop. laughs> I don't care. I love Charlie. He's funny as hell. You're confused, Kanita. Did you miss part of the uh, stream? He's not invincible. He's not a fucking superhero. Brenner. I'm dealing with it. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> He's in the building. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, Kenyatta is this game has uh, at the end of every act has TV episodes, and the episodes slightly change based upon uh, junction points, basically decisions you make in the game. South parking structure. I repeat, south parking structure, fourth floor. Second floor, you gotta cut him off. Yeah, 
now. He's like, this is definitely one of those where you need to play it a couple times to really let the new things sink in. Again, it's a story about time, though. It's gonna be a little weird the first time around. He's setting out the entrance. Hundred percent sample, yes. And I think I, I mentioned that uh, whiteboard with the two uh, pyramids meeting each other in that. It actually represents sulfur if you get to the alchemical side of things. But anyways, the merging of opposites. Okay, he's heading south on Eastman. South on Eastman. Scene. Honestly, I've always stuck with my uh, Toyota only because it's if you take care of that engine, it'll last you forever. goes on a little bit too long, but whatever. God damn. Third Street, he's headed to the alley. Copy that. Honestly, Charlie's one of those you want on your team. Yeah, he's antagonistic right now, but... I'm not sure little game, but if Alan Wake 2 is going to still have firearms. I'd presume so, because every one of the Remnant's games has been, uh, with the exception of um, Death Rally, has had some kind of firearms mechanic. And done. And that's that. Oh, boy. So, before we end things off here, we are actually going to take a look at something pretty dang cool. Let's go to our timeline real quick. And we have diary entries. We're going to have to check them out. So, we have audio diaries that pop up every now and then as the story progresses. So let's go ahead and pop our way through these. So the first one we get, um, if we, so this one changes based upon if we get the PR or the hardline version, this is the hardline one. I can still see her eyes, pleading, begging to be saved. The university incident forced me to take extreme measures to cover our tracks. Amy Ferraro will be the first of many unfortunate but necessary sacrifices. Her face is etched into my mind. I hold it there, begging to be saved, to remind me what all this is for. Jack's transport never arrived at Ground Zero. It was a strange relief. If it had, he may already be dead. But Jack has a larger role in this to play. My visions have made that clear. Seeing Jack at the university, it awakened something in me. An admonition of what was coming. A reminder of how it all started. Who I once was. Seventeen years ago, I performed a test that caused a fracture in time. I was to blame. I came to terms with that very quickly. It took far longer to accept that there was nothing I could do to stop it. I built Monarch from the shadows, waited 17 years for that moment to arrive again, thought I was ready. This was my greatest struggle to date, feeling the moment approaching, simply allowing such a tragedy to occur, knowing any action I would take to prevent it would simply make it so. And now it's here. We are the only ones prepared for what comes next. 
my plan was in motion. The time for hiding is over. So essentially, like, I actually already have a video on this, but just by going off of this, it appears that Paul is not necessarily like a purely evil, <laughs> evil corporate uh, head character. He fully understands that everything that's happening right now is his direct fault. And he is attempting to do something to remedy his uh, past mistakes. The problem being... He's of the opinion that no matter what he does, it's going to make things worse. So he's not attempting to fix the problem. He's accepting that the uh, this end of time is going to occur and then planning for what comes after that rather than fixing it up front. Now... It comes down into what type of time travel we're talking about. Can things... Like, there's uh, first and second modes of time travel. Can things be changed versus everything set? And then there's a mixture of the two. And we'll get more in, into what version of time travel we're talking about here. But... Yeah. So that's him right there. We got two for Jack. And these unlocked over the course of the first um, act. But I didn't want to stop the episode. Stop the gameplay. Just to re look at these. But we'll do them now. How close were you with Serene before the experiment? He'd been looking out for me ever since we were kids. When my parents passed away, Paul's family made sure I got back on my feet. You know, Will wasn't around much. I never did have a tendency to make things easy for myself. <laughs> Guess I dragged Paul into my mess. We spent a lot of time looking for trouble. We found it. He got out, I didn't. You said you owed him one. He saw the path I was on, where I'd end up if I stayed. He got me out of the country, told me to never look back. Until now, I never did. Yeah, no, we were close. So, basically all we get there is it sounds like Jack is used to getting into the shit and on the illegal end of the spectrum. Part two. Your brother was hired as head advisor on Project Promenade. Given William's concerns with the project, why do you think he accepted the position? He knew he had to get on the inside if he was going to put a stop to it. I've got a better question for you. Why did Monarch secretly push to get my brother hired if they knew he was a threat? You wanted him there. Why? That is simply untrue. Monarch invested heavily in the university experiment. It made sense to offer our own Cronin researcher, Dr. Kim, as the lead developer on the project. Kim's death was a tragedy for us all. But when he passed, we... Don't play games with me. <laughs> Excuse me? Look, you forget that I know things I didn't back then. I know what really happened to Dr. Kim. What exactly are you inferring? You want me to tell the truth? Then it goes both ways. Okay. So again, even though we never see Dr. Kim throughout the course uh, so far in the story, the uh, sign that we had... Let's go back here. The sign we had at the front here. Watch the job fair poster. Doc Memorial is there stating here that he has been deceased as of February 13th. And Jack is calling BS on that. And they're stating that he went miss. She's saying that he went missing. This says that he's dead. And Jack says, I know what's fucking going on. Don't lie to me. And we'll get more on that later. And, um,. Dragon of the West, that's going to be really addressed later on in the game, so I can't really say anything more about those junction points. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts time travel has ri very random rules, and then they break those rules, because apparently uh, Merlin can just say, you know what, I'm going to make a door that travels to the past, rather than obeying all those laws. But then again, Disney logic. So about Paul building up Monarch using shady investments, does it count as insider trading if the information you're using is publicly available? Yes, yes it does. <laughs> Yeah, so essentially, like, if reading between the lines, after he went into the time machine, he ended up in the so-called end of time, and then something happened, sent him back in time 17 years, and he started building up the Empire because, again, he knows what stock tips to bet on. He knows what to do, like, what companies are going to be up and coming. So he made a lot of money in the stock market as a result. 
Okay, let's get back to the diaries real quick. We have one from uh, Sarah's love over here, Beth Wilder. October 9th, 0400 hours. Monarch operation moves into the university in 15 minutes. <sighs> this is it. Years of training all leading up to this moment. Just need to keep my cover just a little bit longer. Monarch's objective is to apprehend Jack and William Joyce, alive if possible. If what she told me is true, then this operation is gonna end in a shitstorm. It's up to me to make sure Jack gets out of this thing in one piece, but I can't risk blowing my cover just yet. The notebook didn't give me any orders regarding William. Still not sure how Jack is the key to all of this if William is the one with all the answers. We're about to find out. Okay, it's time to do this. Beth Wilder, signing off. Hmm. So, yep, she's a Monarch employee working undercover and has our, the main character's backs at the end of the day. That's all we really know about her as of right now. But one little quick tidbit of details that I want to pop in. Again, let's read off uh, the poem that Thomas Zane gave to Alan Wake at the beginning of his game while he was still in the nightmare. In the lake he called home, there lies a deeper, darker ocean green, where waves are both wilder and more serene. To its ports, I've been, been, Riverport. So that poem directly relates to the port is here, serene and wilder. Just a random little Easter egg I wanted to throw in there before we move past this. So does that imply that possibly that Zane visited the port, aka Riverport, or this pocket universe at one point? Who fucking knows whether it's just an echo and not uh, a canon Easter egg? Who freaking knows? Doesn't really matter. Just something interesting to point out. And we have, sorry, I know there's a lot of just random stuff we're doing now that the episode's over, but we're going to be doing this every single time, too. So the next thing we got here, I think is actually, it might be on the second chapter. All right, so remember those quantum ripples. Now, after you watch the episode for the act where you initially found those quantum ripples, you'll act, you'll unlock additional uh, narrative stuff right here. Plot twist, Zane wrote Quantum Break. That'd be crazy. I don't think it fits with the style, though. He, I, we've never seen him do any science fiction stuff. But anyways, so what happens? This is a, called a Quantum Ripple Report. And there are two doctors that work for Monarch, Dr. Morphin and Dr. Ranger. Yes, that is a Power Rangers reference, in case anybody was curious. Morphin and Ranger, yeah, anyways. So their job is to research these quantum ripples. So this one, when uh, Will changed the uh, equation on the whiteboard, this is what happened as a result of this equation. S plot qu twist, Sam did it after Scratch kidnapped him, so it was Scratch's idea. That would actually make perfect sense. That would make perfect sense right there. Okay, core stability ev equation solved how on earth so they have no clue how they solved the equation in the report university promenade lab effect of the ripple university core stabilized hq time machine primed so they're able to figure it out a lot quicker for one the effect of the additional effect of the ripple massive power outage in the town of ordinary maine a sudden uh, uprising violent crime over the night so by solving the equation, some because of chaos theory, again, you can never predict the outcome of a decision you make. There's a power adage in Maine. In Ordinary. Again, this was already set up. And at this point in time, they this is four years after the song uh, Bounce Lays the Demon, where the back, by Old Gods of Asgore, the backwards speak states that this will happen again in another town, a town called Ordinary. This was already being prepped. All right, the effect of the ripple. Assistant, uh, lab assistant Weintz leaves for home early to celebrate, finds a wife with the mailman, kills both, is currently in jail. So, again, 
who knows how changing an equation caused him to leave home early, f find his wife cheating, and then kills both of them. Again, chaos theory, you can't predict it, that's the point. Alright, so there's a line here. You're also a phone. Maybe also a phone, uh, house phone call. I'm trying to see. So these two are uh, connected right here. Lab supervisor rolling alert to the scene suffers a fatal car crash between these two right here. Down at the bottom, number sequence 01122 is featured in the results. Yielded once to fix the equation is implemented. Ben Jones, alias time traveler, possibly wins the lottery. The winning numbers include 11 and 22. And this is going to be the first random bit of information that I don't think anyone in the community has really solved this problem. It's just a thing. But these numbers, 01122, appear all over the freaking place in the game. And again, just like in Lost, someone played them as the lottery numbers and won the lottery. So Ben Jones is the one who won the lottery. They're not sure what happened here. Possibly in time travel. Who knows? And checked by Dr. Morphin. What if all the remedy verse is the wilder and wilder stories of Alan in the dark place throwing Easter eggs of his experience into multiverse is currently created random? That's I think that might be the case here in the Quantum Break universe. Uh, Ty is that it's a pocket universe that he created for the purposes. That, like there's no other way to explain random bits of him appearing ra again randomly on a white. There's like a chalkboard in a chemistry classroom with Alan Wake literary lecture. That just doesn't seem to be. That makes no sense. Anyways, moving onwards. So this is the discussion between the two. So a time traveler is really uh, Dr. Morphin. It could be a time traveler. Look, we can't just... No, 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 no. It could be a time traveler. But you can't prove... You can't prove it's not a time traveler. Well, you can't prove it's not an alien or a hyper-intelligent dog. Not being able to disprove something doesn't mean... Yeah, it could be an alien. Oh, God. <laughs> I love their discussions right here. So apparently Dr. Ranger here is just like, yeah, it could be aliens. Or no, Morphin. Dr. Morphin's like, yeah, it could be aliens. He's like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude, come on. <laughs> if you notice the time glitches, the ground zero happen exactly like the time lapses in Alan Wake. Yeah, I think they use similar um, effects on it for sure. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for me too. After I left, I saw the number 23 everywhere. It was spooky. Well, yeah, the 23 Enigma, uh, the Earth's axis is tilted at exactly 0.23 degrees. It's, yeah. That that one pops up all over the place. But, um, yeah, that 01122, keep an eye on it. And that's also why I wanted to go the hardline route, because you will not get any of the information on those numbers if you go the PR route. So if the U.S. has the FPC... Okay, now that this section's done, let's go ahead and... Since we're now in pure discussion mode, let's head back to the reading room. So, yeah, those those numbers only appear in the hardline path. That's partially why I wanted to make sure we went down that direction, but partially because we get to see Dylan Faden's actor throughout the story. Otherwise, we would never have seen him again. But this really goes back to the entire point. They named the library, which is the center point of the start of the game, after the grand the the pappy of chaos theory and all of these quantum ripple investigations are all about how can you predict how these this one event caused all these things it's ficking nuts guys man we're gonna see more and more of that as the story continues but anyways i'm gonna be heading off i got a splitting headache right now i need to go freaking grab some water and pass out because i i'm dead in my feet right now but thank you all for hanging out and joining this is definitely one I was excited to get to because not a lot of, even among Remedy fans, Quantum Break is not one that's um, played a lot. But anyways, everyone have a good night. Have a good day if you're on the other side of the world. Love you all. Take it easy. See you on the next stream. Bye-bye.